coverage, not only of the four star long, the four star short for the eight and nine year old class as well, which has produced some real future superstars, will be live from 10.30. Now, the man that will be leading you through the eight and nine year old class throughout the weekend is sat alongside me for this first session of dressage. And I will say a very good morning, Ben King. Well, good morning, Nicole. It is great to be here as we see our first competitor coming down the centre line. This is Amy Penny on PSH Encore, starting her test. The test being ridden today is the four-star test A. We'll see that in a little bit more detail. Amy rides this uh, mare, 10 years of age, for owner Gary Power. She's the uh, stable jockey for Power Sport Horses, based over in Wales. And she's getting a good number of horses at this level now as well. This first uh, trot across the diagonal is a medium trot. The second that comes forward in a moment will be, or a third in, in a moment, will be the extended trot. They've got two medium trots to show to our ground jury. I'll introduce you to our ground jury. President for the four-star long from the United States of America is Bobby Stevenson. And ground jury members Sue Baxter and Douglas Hibbert. And it looks to me that PSH Encore has just settled nicely into the early parts of this test. It's always sort of quite uh, an electric sort of atmosphere. Even early on at Blenheim Palace, you've got that gorgeous palace of the backdrop. As now we see her doing the extended trot across that diagonal. And there's a lot to like from the early part of this test. The mare's looking very rideable, very relaxed, very calm and getting some nice marks in from our ground jury, I would think. Now coming through to the half passes. And what they're looking for here is that regularity and the quality of the trot. And just important for the riders to keep the horse balanced, keep them between the legs, listening to the aids. And she did a good job there. I would almost just say a little bit more oomph, a little bit more impulsion needed. Yeah, I mean, just a little bit more forward, taking the bridle a little bit more forward. And now it's coming to these, now some riders would say <laughs> the dreaded pirouettes. <laughs> I think plenty of riders would say the dreaded pirouettes. They probably see the A-test and they oh, pirouettes. But there is method in the madness of uh, the uh, team, the really experienced team actually that wrote this four-star long test. And they are a real question for these event horses. But looking for the regularity of the steps engagement of the hind leg as well. Essentially, you want to be going round on a dustbin lid. Well, this part of the test, this is the extended walk. They really want to get the horse just to draw out its nose, just sort of showing that relaxation. The judges will be looking for that horse just really striding out. Amy seems to be riding PHS Encore nicely through this extended walk. Now we get to the, what I call, we've done the trot movements. Coming up now will be the, more of the canter part of the test. And this combination actually come here fresh from uh, Blair Castle, long format, uh, full start a few weeks ago. They had a really steady run cross country there but jump clear cross country. However, their dressage on that occasion, I didn't actually see the test, but I would say didn't go to plan, uh, picked up a 57.5. So, so far, I would think Amy would be absolutely thrilled with how this mare is keeping a lid on it. No, she definitely is. Because there is an atmosphere up here, as I was saying earlier, Nicole, even at this early stage with that backdrop of the palace, this big m palace arena, Unfortunately, not coming up very late behind with the change, which will be expensive. Took probably about three strides for the mare to uh, change behind. She stayed relaxed throughout, but just not on the aids. Amy's actually got three rides in this four-star long format class. She's got a busy weekend here. No, and stable jockey to uh, Gary Power, who... Massive supporter of British eventing. Has a lot of horses on the circuit with that PSH. Better prefix. flying change. She definitely, you could really see the age. She she asked for it um, very clearly. And it wasn't straight, but 
the mare definitely came through for her better than the first test. A little bit off the centre line, a little bit of movement in that final hole, but I think she will be absolutely thrilled with that, and so she should be. Just a little couple of jog steps away from her final hole, just perhaps showing that the mare wasn't quite as relaxed as we perhaps thought, but uh, I think Amy will be uh, very pleased with the improvement that she'll see in this mare's first phase score from their debut at the level at uh, Blair Castle earlier on this year. Actually only stepped up to four-star level this season. And uh, Amy, as I said earlier, getting a real stable of exciting stars for the future. She's getting some good mileage at the four-star level now. And uh, she gets us up and running here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials, brought to you by the Jockey Club. And uh, fantastic to have live coverage with you all weekend. Waiting for those scores uh, to come through from our ground jury. But it looks to be trending somewhere around the late 30s as things stand at the moment. Next to come forward, it is uh, Wills Oakden. Wills rides uh, Arclo Puissance by Puissance. This is a horse that actually was originally campaigned by uh, Oliver Townend. But Wills has had the ride uh, this season, owned by Kathleen Wilkinson and Rachel Wood. And actually, uh, by uh, Puissance, but out of a dam uh, called Cruising Jewel, who I'd imagine good cruising bloodlines in there. Will's hugely experienced, had a great international win up at uh, Blair Castle a few weeks ago. He's based up in Perth as well. So uh, nice to get one relatively uh, close to home. Uh, For those of you that listen to your um, eventing, the Equating's Eventing podcast, we'll all know Sam Watson's favourite stallion. Is a puissance. It is, actually. He loves a puissance horse. All his big championship horses have been by puissance. Uh, this, though, Will Zoakden is uh, coming forward. He had a good run here um, last year. Had a great clear cross country with McGregor's Cooley. A horse that uh, has been off with a little bit of injury, but hopefully we'll see them back out and again soon. Uh, 36.3 is the score that has just come through for Amy Penny and PSH Encore for Gary Power as Will Zoakden and Arclo Puissance start their test. He settles into the shoulder in. Before now moving to the medium trot, and we just see the medium trot, and we'll see later on the difference between that medium trot to what they'll be asking for the extended trot across the longer diagonal. And it's always difficult for these riders just settling into the first early movements of the test. And Will's doing a great job of settling Arclo Puissance. Second medium trot there. They're just looking for the regularity, the rhythm, and the elasticity. Yeah, extended trot. It's so important to keep the horse balanced as well so they don't break into that canter stride. Just asking enough to get that horse to extend. And Will's doing a really good job there. And this horse has actually rerouted from Blair Castle. Things didn't quite go to plan there, so uh, reverted to plan B. But uh, a third ride for Wills in this four-star long format. A couple of riders coming forward with uh, not one, not two, but three rides to their name. And you just see the difference between this horse and, and the first horse that we saw. And there's a little bit more energy coming from Arclo Puissance. No, definitely just taking the bridle a little bit more forward, just striding out and now getting to these pirouettes. I'm probably a little bit wide. I'm not going to sort of... Uh, but didn't get stuck. Didn't get stuck, kept the movement. This one's better. better. Much better. Just lost a little bit of rhythm in the second half of that. now through for this uh, extended walk. Just trying to stretch that nose out. Asking our Sleepy to just stride on. In front of our ground jury members here, that was, as Nicole mentioned earlier, Robert Stevenson from the USA, the President of the Ground Jury, Douglas Hibbert and Sue Baxter judging this test as into the canter movements moves Wills Aikton and Arkley Puissance 
in this four-star long competition. And as soon as they go into that canter, they get the opportunity to really open up. So if they've had any tension creeping in in the walk, it's a really good opportunity to push that out. The extended canter that comes up very quickly after that transition, that was a nice half pass. And actually, this horse feels like he's settled more into his canter work. This is the first of the flying changes. Oh, just a little bit of resistance that came through. And they are looking to get that flying change exactly on the X. That's the marker in the middle of the arena. Now moving to the half pass left. They'll be looking for the quality of the collected canter and the engagement from behind. Second flying change. And almost, you can just see as they did that half of circle came out, I almost just felt like he almost drifted into half pass again for a second. But straighten the horse out for the flying change. And Will Zoakton, Arclo Puissance for owners Rachel Wood and Kathleen Wilkinson come to the end of their test. Good halt from Arclo Puissance. From our view, we can only see exactly the view of Bobby Stevenson, who is president of our ground jury. But ultimately, that is why you have judges dotted about around the outside of the arena from different positions. Because, uh, for example, the judge on the long side at E, can very easily see then if the horse is square to us, he looked square. Um, we'll presume he was square then because that's what we saw. Well, we can only go on the angle we saw, Nicole. I mean, this test, uh, the four, st four star A test, does have the 22 numbered movements with uh, 10 marks awarded, and then they do have that collective mark, which is almost like a, a Brucey bonus, it's a double bonus. And the, there they get they're looking for the harmony of the horse and the rider. And that sort of partnership. It's interesting, isn't it? Because that coefficient or the collective mark, actually, um, which is a, a coefficient of two. Um, so they times it by two. So if they get seven, they would essentially get 14 marks to add to their test sheet. But it, it has only been changed the last couple of years that it used to be four separate marks. And you had um, things for paces and rider and as you go. And now it is simply one collective mark, harmony of athlete and horse. And essentially, they're looking for a confident partnership created by adhering to the scale of training. That is what they're looking for. Um, and so it's just interesting to get the real feel for, you know, ultimately... Some people will be delighted those have gone. Uh, others, I think, would always like the opportunity to pick up because you could really see your, your mark impacted in a positive way when those collectives came through. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, I think if you uh, spoke to a you know, variety of riders around, around Blenheim today, you know, they'd sort of, some would be very much for bringing back the old system and some very much liking this new system. Um, but it is sort of a... yeah. Riders have different preferences, but uh, what a picture that is, the Palace Arena. As we see our latest horse coming into the arena, Cardinal Earl Grey and Kylie Roddy. Yeah, Kylie's such an experienced competitor now. She made her five-star debut at the end of last year with uh, SRS Can Do and actually um, completed inside the top 10 in Le Moulin this year. And that was nice, actually. You just saw her turn her head and, and say good morning to the volunteer who is in charge of... Uh, opening the arena gate and closing the arena gate. Um, and it, it really isn't possible to run events such as this without an massive army of volunteers. And we're so grateful to each and every one of them. So uh, this is uh, Kylie Roddy, Carden Earl Grey. And uh, looking forward to uh, Kylie's uh, test. This horse owned by the Earl Grey Tea Party goers. That sounds like a lot of fun. Combination that were actually just outside the top 20 at the Hambro Sport Horses Burgeon International Horse Trials a little bit earlier on this year, but have been top 15 last year at Little Downham and uh, actually stepping up to the four-star long level for the first time in a couple of years for this horse. Had a brilliant uh, top 10 finish at Stragon back in 2019. They were eighth on that occasion and uh, having had a little bit of time on the sidelines, obviously the last couple of years have not been the most straightforward. Um, stepping back up to the four-star long level. And actually Kylie's fifth visit here to the Plan and Palace International Horse Trials. So just a couple of walk steps into what looks to be an absolutely beautiful halt. With a big, a big smile on her face to the president of our ground jury there. It's all about that perception, that overall picture. Kylie, not just a, a very good rider, but also a, a very keen boxer. 
I didn't know that. No, she's uh, had a couple of fights now. I think she's unbeaten. Oh. She, she, no, she says it's a great way to keep her fitness levels up as well. Um, she's a very, very good coach as well. She is a very highly recognised uh, coach. I think she's a, a fellow of the British Horse Society, which is a, an extremely high accolade. And Cardinal Grey can really produce some low numbers in this phase. When they were top 10 at Stragon, they actually picked up a 26.9 in the first phase, which would absolutely see them lay down a real challenge here. And see the first two medium trots, then the extended trot across the diagonal. And the first horse that we've seen go in a double bridle. Double bridles were very, very popular for a few years, but actually seem to uh, see less of them now than we did. You know, the double bridle, um, some riders would say, oh, it's sort of easier to get the contact, get that overall um, contact with the horse with the double bridle on. Um, but other riders would disagree. I think it's a real art to riding a double bridle. Uh, you see now Kylie coming into these pirouettes. Just lost a little bit of impulsion. The horse is almost anticipating what he's going to be asked. She did well to keep that going. Nice, neat pirouette. Now it's uh, very difficult for riders because horses can anticipate, so they don't want to be uh, sort of riding this test fully at home too regularly because horses will begin to anticipate where the movements are. It's funny, isn't it? You know, some horses actually like that. They get real reassurance from it. Some riders like to, to really ride through the test. Others prefer to keep the horses a little bit sharper, not know what's coming. Um, and it, it's very much horses for courses, but really nice walk from this combination. Just needs to take the contact down. This extended walk. Doing so that looking for the overtrack where the hind feet actually land further on from where the, the front four had landed. I always think the extended walk is actually quite a difficult sort of a movement to really pick up the good marks. Some horses have more of a natural walk than others. Riders can do a sort of job of sort of trying to make a horse that doesn't walk that well sort of better. You can train them to sort of get their nose stuck out a bit more, get that length, get that over track. Kylie now moves into the canter movements of this test. That collected canter, they're looking for that fluency, regularity, rhythm. Coming across after that half oh. circle, straight on the centre line for the first of those flying changes. Gets that beautifully, really nice. Thomas Carleal, uh once commentating in an Event Rider Masters class, um, one of my favourite pieces of commentary said that actually the best flying changes are like the best kisses. They come when you're least expecting them. And I was like, a swoon. <laughs> but it is true, actually. They should feel effortless. They should feel very easy. You shouldn't even see the horse has done it. It's just be, that is the sort of what they're aiming for. And we'll see what Kylie does here. She does done the half pass. That looked good to, good to me. Yeah, perhaps not quite as fluent as the first, but you just felt the anticipation for one stride before the change. But the cl the change was very clean, uh, and I think the judges will like it a lot. And she comes down the final centre line. Holts have been a highlight in this test for me, and I think this uh, has been a very, very smart test to, uh, I imagine, go to the top of the leaderboard and set the early standard. We've got a score in for Wills Oakton, Arclo Puissance, 36.9. So he sits just behind Amy Penny, our Pathfinder, 36.3. But I think Kylie Roddy will be very pleased with that, and so she should be. Oh, definitely. Pat's all around there. I'm, I'm just looking through the sort of the role of honour from this class. I mean, some really good horses have come here to Blenheim and then gone on to sort of 
represent sort of Team GB. I mean, we had uh, Aoife Clark. Yes, she rides for Ireland. She rose one on Finian's Elegance in 2013. That was a ride for Oliver Townend at the Europeans at Blair in 2015. Piggy March, Brookfield Innocent, winners here in 2019. Part of that gold medal winning team. I'd almost, I'd almost say that it feels like a little bit of a, a following year they go on to, to championship level. And actually, this weekend, um, Banzai de Loire, Yazingham, the defending champions, or, or I say the defending champions, they're not here to defend their title, but the reigning champions, um, that you know they won here 12 months ago and they are now out in Protoni at the FEI Venting World Championships. So, uh, you know, there is such a good form line in this field. Bettina Hoist and your Medicot, the uh, incredible German combination, have won here previously as well. The record finishing score actually falls with an American, it is Clark Montgomery Lock and Glen, 22.5, their total score. Uh, Echo Ratings providing all of the numbers this weekend. Do go and give them a follow on social media to keep up to date. Um, interestingly, a 33.8 for Kylie Roddy and uh, Carden Earl Grey. I thought we might see it go a little bit lower than that, but uh, 33.8 certainly sets the standard as things are at the moment. Definitely, definitely. I'm just looking at the breakdowns of the score. Uh, they, the judge is fairly consistent across the board there. But that's the score now to beat. 33.8, Kylie Roddy, Cardinal L. Gray take that early lead in this four-star long competition. As now coming forwards, it is Rue Fox. Rue with Copy Luak and a uh, combination that come forward having been top 20 at Little Downham in the four-star short last year. Actually, the horse's debut at the level. Rue, pretty experienced. Thir uh, 28 runs, 30 runs at the four-star long level, nearly on the horizon for her. So pretty experienced would be a rider that has previously been to Blenheim only on one occasion and looking for her first completion here in 2022. Copy Luak owned by Rue herself by numero uno and uh, coming forward on the horse's debut at the level. 12-year-old Matt. Yeah, no, Rue, a very experienced rider, as you were alluding to a moment ago, Nicole. Had a good ride around Burley on Fleet Street a few years ago, but unfortunately then didn't trot up the next day. I know she was absolutely gutted about that because that horse really did make the course look very easy. As Rue now settles into the early moves of this test. Score here in the four star long was on the Dutch horse 40.7. That was back in 2014. That stack provided by Equa Ratings. Who now comes across the diagonal for that medium trot. Just lost a little bit of impulsion as they came back to the markup. Now will be the first of those extended trots across the long diagonal. They're really looking for the elasticity and the balance of the horse. I have to say, I do love a plaited tail. That's the one thing I am... Um, it's so great about you, Nicole. You're so observant. I haven't <laughs> even noticed it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, a plaited tail, they do look very smart. And a huge credit must go to all of the, the teams and teams of people that get these horses up to the very top level because the, the grooms do an amazing job, but it takes a whole army, whether it be vets, farriers, uh, physios, you know, they do an incredible effort. And, um, you know, it isn't possible without them. So just coming into this walk transition. On a I always think it's um, like baking a cake and the horse and the rider actually at the competition is almost just like the cherry on the top because... There's just so many ingredients that go into getting the horse and rider here. And if you don't have all your ingredients, you end up with a very flat cake. There you go. So, ooh, just got a little bit stuck in that walk pirouette. Interestingly, these walk pirouettes, they can actually um, take them 
between G and M or between G and H. So it is up to the rider as to where they do that. Obviously, the further they go, the more time they have to prepare. Um, but then the more walk they've got to do as well. And it was just nice to see Rune. A little bit of ringmanship that she just actually gave the horse a little pat with her right hand. So two of the judges wouldn't necessarily have been able to see that. The judge situated at E will have been able to see it. Um, just almost a little bit of tension creeping in in this walk. She's doing a very good job to keep a lid on it. Yeah, and as you mentioned, the first step up to this four-star level, running at the three-star level, just the tests do vary slightly. The four-star, um, you have the half passes. They're at a steep angle and sort of requires more suppleness and crossing over. Three-star tests, we're going to see they don't have the flying changes, so the... When we see Rue come into these... It's one of the biggest... Or oh, just anticipating that canter. Shall we please to get that walk done? It's one of the biggest tests, isn't it? As they step up to the four-star level from three-star Ben, that actually all of a sudden they're being asked to do flying changes in the arena in a test environment, which is very different to actually being asked to do a flying change at home in the school when you're jump training. Oh, 100% massively. I mean, we're going to now see Rue coming across the half pass right in the canter again. They don't do half pass in canter in the four star. I'm oh sorry, in the three star. So the first time the horse would have done half pass in the canter in the competition arena before. And now to the first of these flying changes. Oh, just didn't quite get a totally clean, true flying change. And at, riders can lose so many marks by not riding an accurate test. Um, it seems to Gru seems to be hitting the markers. It looks to be an accurate test. She the the flying change there was clean. It came astride after she asked for it, but it it did come and it was clean. little bit of movement in the halt, not quite immobile straight away, but she looks absolutely delighted with that big pats for Copy Luak from Rue Fox. And she just nods to our ground jury and says, thank you. And uh, the dressage here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials for the four star long format well underway. Now, if you are looking forward to seeing some of those future superstars, the eight and nine year old class kicks off from 1030. So do tune in from 1030 as well. But of course, we will have every single test for you throughout the weekend. And we've had uh, four combinations uh, so far. It is uh, Kylie Roddy and Carden Earl Grey who lead the way 33.9 their total score as uh, next to come forward it is a young lady who has been on a brilliant form over the last couple of weeks the new name is certainly suiting her Georgie Goss Georgie who uh, previously Georgie Spence but married uh, now husband Toby a few weeks ago and uh, certainly has been on great form and this horse actually that set themselves up for a run here with a very good performance actually at Cornbury in one of the three star sections last week when they took the uh, top spot in uh, a very, very competitive three star section. Georgie was on great form actually. Fanta Boy, who she also rides, was uh, inside the top five in another of those sections. And uh, huge credit to the team at Cornbury International Horse Trials. Actually, the course designer is. Uh, David Evans, who is designing here for the cross country at Blenheim Palace as well. And so riders had the opportunity to run on very good ground. It's not often that we see riders actually deciding to run probably a week or so out from the event. I think she ran on Friday, so it would have been, um, you know, six days or so. But actually, Georgie said that, you know, as, as other riders did, that she felt that the ground was very, very good and that ultimately she wanted to, she would have galloped the horse anyway. Why not go and give them a really good confidence building run at the level below to build them up for the big one here? And so she comes here full of confidence. The horses have been in great form and this is a test that I'm very much looking forward to. Yeah, top of the leaderboard at the moment, Kylie Roddy, Cardinal Earl Grey, that 33.9 is still the score to beat. 
have a score in there for Rue Fox and Copula Walk. 39.2 for them. The mayor actually made her debut at Four Star Long Level earlier on this year at Bramham. Wasn't able to go on to complete uh, after that final horse inspection. But is very established at the Four Star Short Level now. Including having been top 20 at both Thorsby and Burnham Market, which were hugely competitive uh, classes. Georgia Bear, experienced rider, won medals at junior, young rider level. Also represented Team GB at the Tokyo Test event. Yeah, she's got a really smart team of horses, actually. And she's been working very hard in this phase, actually, with Ian Woodhead, who is out there currently helping the British team in uh, Protoni. But she said that actually it feels like in the space of eight months, he's knocked five marks off her task consistently across most of her horses. It's the Ian Woodhead effect. And I think part of that is really making sure they're up in front of your leg, very responsive to ride. And this is a very nice test so far. Yeah, there's a lot of presence in this test. A lot of cadence as well, a lot of lift and energy. Nice walk transition. I mean, this. Don't want to sort of uh, put the sort of uh, give it any bad luck, but this looks a good test and could be heading to the top of the leaderboard. But she comes into these pirouettes. A lot of marks can be won or lost here. That looked good to me. As you said earlier, Nicole, it's all about just imagining the horse going around on a bin lid. Yeah. Getting stuck. You want to keep those hind legs moving. And she did a good job through that. And they come away from the second of those walk pirouettes and they go straight into the extended walk. So they're looking for keeping the steps really regular, lengthening them, but also lengthening the outline. And they want them to really accept the contact. Georgie just carefully picking her reins back up. She's a very elegant rider in the dressage. And then that collected canter from the walk. You need a just anticipated it slightly, and Georgie was just like, oh, just another couple of steps. But actually, we'll be glad to get into that canter, into that extended canter. The mare did very well to keep a lid on uh, it in that walk. It just went slightly above the contact, but Georgie said did a great job there. Yeah. Moves in now to the real canter part of this test. Nice half pass. Coming round for the first of these at flying changes. Two flying changes in the four-star test. If we take it as in comparison to the five-star test, there's four in the five-star test. Nice. Cheers. So I was just going to say that really just shows the progression of the levels. We've spoken about the three-star test that don't have the flying changes in the four-star We've got the two, and then the five-star test has the... And it's the four. intensity, isn't it? You know, some of the things about each each of these tests is actually each individual movement on its own is much more straightforward. You put them all together, and cumulatively, they're much more difficult. Yep, that accumulative effect. And in that competition environment, the intensity, obviously, when you're stepping up from three-star to four-star... just Stride early, but it was a clean change. Atmospheres build. It's coming down this centre line now. Oh, a halt and salute. Lovely final halt for Georgie Spence and for Loop. A uh, Georgie Spence slip of the tongue. Georgie Goss, I've been doing so well then, so well. No, not at all. I mean, I think I for about a year I was calling a. Uh, Piggy March, Piggy French, so... <laughs> I think people <laughs> still do, to be fair. Um, and Gemma, uh, obviously, we're going to see later, Gemma Stevens come forward, that is now Gemma Tassel. Oh, so no, sorry, that was <laughs> Gemma... <laughs> so we're going to see Gemma Stevens, that was Gemma Tassel, come forward. 
looking like they are trending to go into the lead. My not go sub 30 but we'll be close to it 33.9 is our current leader kylie roddy carden earl gray rue fox her score has come in she's gone into fourth 39.2 with copy luak so uh, georgie goss and uh, for loop have completed their test and actually georgie we will see with fanta boy a little bit later on tomorrow afternoon a number of those multiple riders in this field. Now it is the turn of a young lady who had a superb result here 12 months ago. It is Grace Taylor. Grace Taylor comes forward riding Game Changer. And uh, this is the horse on whom she finished sixth in that super competitive eight and nine year old class here 12 months ago. She actually rides for the United States. Mum, Anne, is uh, American and so took uh, her nationality. Father Nigel, of course, uh, based at Aston Le Wall's Equestrian Centre, which is a huge hub of eventing here in uh, Great Britain. And uh, Game Changer by Cassidy, owned by Mum, Anne Taylor, has... Uh, been at this level previously, actually went to Bramham this earlier this year, didn't uh, have the ride they would have wanted cross country on that occasion, but she's a very, very talented jockey, Grace, and it's good to see her getting uh, some good rides up the levels as well. And that was a shame there. The horse just resisted the contact as she took her hand off the rein to salute our judges. But she did a clever bit of riding because she really made the most of her good halt. She waited, she was immobile, and then she went to halt and the horse went, I'll say hello as well, um, which was unfortunate for her. Unfortunate, but as you said, Nicole, she kept the sort of submission, the, the balance, a good square halt. So a good way to start the test. She then moves into these trot movements, the shoulder in. They were just looking for the angle, the uniform, and bend. Before they come across to that medium trot. And it Grace, very experienced riders. Also um, rides a lot of young horses for Jody Amos, who's based at Aston Walls as well. Makes her first extended trot. Trying to get Game Changer really to stretch and move forward. Take the bridle forward. Game Changer wouldn't be one of the biggest movers in the field. So Grace having to work really hard to try and get him to show his movements off as best she can. Nice walk transition. How how many how far will she go before she asks for the pirouette? Just went all the way to the edge, but she had to work quite hard for that. Working hard through those pirouettes, just trying to guide Game Changer around and keep him moving, moving the back end around. Now, what will he do here? Because he hasn't got the most expressive trot. What's his walk? Is he asking to stretch out? Looking okay. for that over track. Nice and relaxed. There is quite a stiff old breeze out there today, actually. It's nice weather, but there's a, a fair old breeze. There's lots of flags, lots going on. And the interesting thing with the four-star long competitors coming in this first session is that actually when we get the eight and nine-year-olds started at 10.30, you can see the other arena is right next door. So they actually have company in there because it's quite an open space all by yourself. It is. A, that You know, it's a big arena. And sp some horses and riders like to have a... Another horse in the arena opposite, but others find it a bit of a distraction. Um, it does depend on the horse and rider combination. Grace now gets into this canter movements. So 
first of those half passes. Obviously, game changer just sort of relatively young. Stepping up through the levels, learning his uh, trade. That's what I always like about this class at, at Blenheim, this four-star long. We do see a lot of horses sort of making their debuts at the long level. It's, it's lovely as well to see the graduates from the eight and nine-year-old class. You know, this horse was top 10 in the eight and nine-year-old class last year. It's always nice to see them come back 12 months later and come in the, the four-star long format. Unfortunately, just uh, to behind uh, together behind during that change, which the, will be marked down by the judges. She comes up to her final halt. I just stepped out, lost the quarters slightly in the halt, which uh, President Bobby Stevenson at sea will see quite clearly. The other members of our ground jury at uh, E is Sue Baxter. So she's on the long side, getting a great view of uh, riders from that uh, side view and then Douglas Hibbert is at M so uh, Grace just looking across at the scores with uh, Game Changer as a score in actually for Georgie Goss and uh, for Loop the owners uh, Nikki Cooper, Suzanne Doggett and Lucy Fleming 31.0 so that goes to the top of the table Kylie Roddy goes down into second 33.9 with Carden Earl Grey Next to come forwards, it will be Tom Rowland. Tom with Michael Wilmshurst and Alison Sharps at KND Steel Pulse. Tom, who's based just locally to Pammy Hutton at Talland Equestrian, who he gets help from in this phase. He's a very tall, elegant rider. First of his two rides in the four-star long format here. He'll come forward with Quintilius a little bit later on. KND Steel Pulse, a horse that he thinks a huge amount of wouldn't always be the most straightforward. But sometimes they're the best ones, it must be said. And uh, Tom, who has competed up to five-star level himself, completed badminton this spring. KND Steel Pulse uh, actually went very well at Chatsworth for a clear cross country round and Burnham Market at the four star short level of competition earlier on this year. Completed here last year, actually. Did pick up some jumping penalties, but uh, did get that completion. And so uh, coming back for another go in 2022. So Tom Rowland, KND Steel Pulse for Great Britain, the next to come forwards. So the 10 marks on offer here do start from as soon as they enter the arena to that halt and then to bef the, the tracking right. So that whole movement there. So it's not just the halt the judge is looking more for. It's that overall presence of them entering the arena and coming into the halt and then moving away from it. I always think it's so interesting, isn't it? Because that's your first impression. First impressions make such a big difference. And if you come down the centre line and you sort of announce your arrival in the best positive way, um, hopefully you, you feel the judges are, are more inclined to kind of keep those scores, good scores coming. Um, it always feels quite a long way to go if your first Holton centre line doesn't quite go to plan. No, I think riders always say they, they can get the judges hitting those sort of those, the seven and eights early on. It's sort of, they hope they'll continue to keep... Going seven, eights, nines, tens, hopefully, later on in the test. Tom really asking for that extended trot. And he's not just a good rider. I know um, he spent a good bit of time in the commentary box of late. At various events, talking through the cross-country rounds. Hopefully have him on over this weekend at some point.
So we're doing a good job here on Candy Still Pulse. Just feel like there's a little bit of tension in there that he's doing a very good job, but possibly a little bit quick. Just think we'd like to see him, King Still Pulse, just take the bride a little bit more. Just looks to be ducking behind the contact slightly. Now going in for all that extended walk. So Sue Baxter on her ground jury just there at E. And then the uh, canter transition is directly to canter at C. And that's where our president, Robert Stevenson, is sat. And he will have the best view of that transition. It's interesting, actually, though, because he will get a good view, but actually the legs are kind of sometimes chopped off, depending on the vehicle and what they can see. Um, the bonnet of the car can actually sometimes kind of hide things a little bit, which is where the other two judges come in there. A little bit late. Was that late in front? I believe it was, yes. It's, it's funny, isn't it? You don't always see that. I, um, It kind of makes you blink a little bit. Um, hopefully the judges were blinking too. That's all I'll say. But Tom, doing a great job here. Riding a really accurate test. Better for the second change, much better for the second change. As he comes down the centre line for his halt and salute. And he gets that final halt and salute. And actually, interestingly, um, took every moment of that immobility as well to really give the horse a pat and say thank you very much um good boy and i think he'll be pleased with that we're just waiting for a score actually to come in for grace taylor and game changer for owner and taylor looking like they will be uh, oh we're just waiting for one more judge as marked come in actually a bit of disparity between uh, the judge at uh, M and the judge at C for Grace. So just waiting for that final score. We'll bring it for you as soon as possible. 31.0, the leader, Georgie Goss and for Loop. Well, just uh, a reminder that following the uh, very sad news of the death of Her Majesty, the Queen Elizabeth II, there will be a two minute silence held each day here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials at 12 o'clock each day. And this will be observed by everybody involved in the event. And we would invite, if you're watching along at home, to observe that two-minute silence with us. It will then be followed by the national anthem sung by Laura Wright. Riders have been invited to wear black armbands and flags at Blenheim are being flown here at half-mast in memory of Her Majesty the Queen. Now, uh, three combinations to come forward before the... Uh, First break of the weekend, and it is Dan Jocelyn for New Zealand who uh, gets things uh, going again. Dan comes forward with Cooley one to many, and this a horse that is owned by Carol King. Carol, who would be a familiar face to many people on the eventing circuit as a cross-country controller. Francesca Clapham, uh, Sophie Allison, Sean and Lucy Allison as well. And Dan, who's represented New Zealand at major championship level. He was at the last World Equestrian Games, as it was then, back in Tryon in 2018 with Gravine Derev. And uh, now, of course, the World Championships, as they are known, being held this weekend in Bretoni. But he's been a stalwart of the New Zealand team over the years. And this is a horse that he is very excited about for the future. Thinks a massive amount of this 14-year-old by Jack of Diamonds. Former rider Daisy Barkley, I believe. Dan taking over the ride this year. Obviously, Nicole mentioned a stalwart for Team New Zealand. He had that flagship horse, Silence, in the late 90s, early 2000s that 
had 10 placings at Babblington Burley <laughs> over 10 years. And this horse actually has uh, some good form. They went to Bramham in the long format uh, full start a little bit earlier on this year. Scored 33.9 in the first phase. Just one second over the time on a very good cross-country round and ended up with a top 15 finish. But the horses also previously started at the four-star long at Bicton last year with Daisy Barkley on board. As Ben says, a new partnership for Dan this year and some new owners on board as well, which is hugely exciting for his string. They come here off the back of a very good sixth-place finish actually at Wellington in the three-star short format as their final preparation run pre Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials. A score in for Grace Taylor, game changer, 34.7 into third at the moment. Seeing the, the um, some really nice crossovers for that. Um, for Dan going through the trot stages of this test. With those shoulder ends, horse really tracking over. Now comes into these warp pirouettes. How far will he go out? Interesting enough, Dan just decided to actually not walk out as far before asking for the pirouette. A little bit wide and then just gets a little bit stuck as they sort of try and get themselves back on their track. Just loses the rhythm slightly. Yeah, dressage all about sort of rhythm and feel between the horse and rider. And up to this level, they spent many hours in the ar arena at home, building the horse up. Nice transition there on C for Dan and Cooley one to many. You said hours, I was thinking years, but <laughs> because actually to get a horse to the four star long level of competition, you're probably looking at at least four or five years uh, at competitive level since they come, when they come out as a as a five year old. You'd perhaps most commonly see horses stepping up at at nine years of age. Some a little bit younger. Um, we've actually had a, a couple of horses win at four star long level as seven year olds, um, but it is hard, much sort of uh, fewer and further between. Yeah, no, definitely. I think probably years is definitely a better sort of. Oh, that that wasn't going to plan there that first of the flying plate changes just lost the straightness and a little bit late off the aids just drop a few marks there for Dan because it was it is looking a good test but that flying change will have cost him it's amazing isn't it you know we talk about the concept of a clear round in the dressage and actually if you can score a mistake free test and get sevens from every judge for every movement, that's a 30. That's a pretty yep. good score. Um, you know, when those mistakes creep in, depending on the, the severity of them, it can prove expensive. Gentleman in the grey gilet there on the left-hand side, just as we saw coming across the arena, that is Andrew Benny, who is actually president of the eight, nine-year-old class. A little bit later on, that starts at half past 10. Lovely halt for Dan Jocelyn. And he finishes his test with Cooley one to many for owners Carol King, Francesca Clapham, Sophie Allison, Sean and Lucy Allison. Nice to see there's no tension, very relaxed, walking out of the arena. Oh, Dan Jocelyn and Cooley won too many. 35.7 is the score that's just come in for Tom Rowland with Michael Wilmshurst and Alison Sharp's KND Steel Pulse. So he goes fourth at the moment. Georgie Goss for Loop are the leaders, 31.0. And actually, a score just in for Dan Jocelyn. And he sits second, 33.4. Pushes Kylie Roddy down into third. Obviously, a very early stage. 33.9 uh, was his score at Bramham a little bit earlier on this year. 33.4 here this time. So keeping the consistency at the level. And uh, 
Dan Jocelyn Cooley one to many looking very relaxed as they exit the arena. So you can just see the ground jury preparing themselves in the other arena for the eight and nine year old class, which kicks off here in around 35 minutes time as uh, making sure he says a very happy good morning uh, is Alex Bragg to our ground jury. Alex, the next uh, to come forward, he rides uh, Ardeo uh, Premier. This is a nine-year-old by Hold Up Premier, uh, owned by Debbie and Neil Nuttall, who've been big supporters of Alex's over the years. And actually, this is a horse that went very, very well at Le Lyon d'Angers as a young horse um, a couple of years ago in, in 2020, in seven-year-old year, and finished fourth just out of the medals in the Young Horse World Championships there. Has since stepped up to four-star long with a very good top 15 finish and a double jumping clear round at Mill Street back in June. So looking to establish themselves at the four-star long level here before, dare I say it, a potential five-star in 2023. But this combination actually were also top 20 in the eight and nine year old class here 12 months ago. Alex, who is based down in Somerset, has a really nice team of horses, a former Event Rider Masters winner with the uh, wonderful Zagreb, has been uh, on a number of occasions uh, listed for British teams, written on British Nations Cup teams. And uh, just went to correct that halt slightly. A bit of a wry smile from Alex because he went to correct it and actually it didn't quite pay off. But uh, you've got to put that behind him now. He'll be now looking to try and claw back any marks lost from the slightly slightly wayward entrance and halt through it's, this trot stages. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, we say about first impressions, but actually, you know, it isn't the end of the world. It's one of those things you want to make a great first impression on the judges, but you kind of go, okay, well, it's done now. Move on to the next movement. And any good judge absolutely judges what they see for that movement. I love to see a range of marks and by, by no means was that a one or a two. Um, but even sometimes when there is a one or a two, just a little bit of loss of, of rhythm at the early part of the medium trot there. Almost broke into canter, but just got away with it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how much he asked now in this extended uh, trot. So you could nearly break into the canter. How much will he ask for? I think he was a little bit careful coming off the turn, but actually he asked for plenty and the horse delivered plenty. Be a lovely eye-catching uh, sort. Let me see there on the half pass. Just a touch early into the walk. I'm um I didn't actually see what Alex was wearing in the um trot up uh, yesterday. I missed the trot up, but I know he's a man that has a lot of style and uh, the event collection. I know Kit and Mauk quite regularly with some very nice trot up outfits. It's good to see all horses get through the trot up yesterday for this four star long competition. Yeah, and it was Roberto Scalisi who won Best Dress Male, very kindly supported by Hi Ho Silver and Rosie Fry, Best Dress Female, who we'll see uh, throughout the next few days. But Alex, yes, as you say, he is always one of those that is uh, dressed to impress. I'm not even sure, I mean, he. Uh, He'd say he just th threw on this old thing, but actually always looks very smart. I'm sure his wife, Simone, helped him <laughs> like this. But no, just going back to the walk, I mean, Ardo Premier maybe didn't draw his nose down as much as the judges would like. To get that lengthening of stride. The walk has improved, actually. I felt just when he went into it, felt a little bit fragile, but he, he relaxed slightly as the walk went on. And uh, Alex was just a little bit cautious in asking for the extended canter along that long side. But the horse comes back to him really nicely at the far end. Always a sign of a good rider, though, that they ride what's underneath them in the test. They know how much to ask for. With, because if they ask for too much, things can go um, awry. 
And sometimes they, those best tests are on the knife edge, aren't they? They're the, they're the ones that score really big marks. But this has been a smart test from this young horse. And it's interesting, there aren't huge crowds here yet. Ooh, change just happened a little bit early for them, but came nicely. Um, there aren't huge crowds here, but there's so much to, to look at. There's lots of branding boards. There's all the hospitality along one end. There's a great big blooming palace along one side. I mean, that's enough to look at for anybody. Um, His Grace, uh, the Duke of Marlborough, a very kind host here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials. You know, it's a big arena. And uh, as you say, a lot for them to look at. They really do feel like sort of a... That's uh, late behind... And just looks a little bit like he's perhaps taking in something on that long side. And he just got behind Alex's leg slightly there. And Alex did a very good job to keep him going because he just looked like he wanted to have a jolly good spook. Unfortunately, quarters swing out behind in that final halt. Alex just looks across at those scores. And our DA Premier, certainly a horse with bags and bags of talent for the future. A couple of mistakes just crept in there today that will be costly to the over overall score. So won't challenge our leader of uh, Georgie Goss and uh, for loop 31.0. But should uh, still be a very good starting score for him. And we'll bring you those scores as soon as they're available. Don't forget, you can view them all at ventingscores.co.uk to keep up to date with all of the live scores from throughout the weekend. Myself, Nicole Brown and Ben King sat alongside me for this first session of Dressage. We'll be guiding you through the full competition in this four-star long format. We've got some good guests lined up to come into the commentary box as well. And uh, Ben will be heading off to do the eight and nine-year-old class, Ben. And it's always a class I absolutely love because from the past winners of the eight and nine-year-old class, we've got five five-star winners. We've got a, an Olympic gold medalist in Laura Collett, London 52. Could have a world championship gold, silver, bronze medalist by the end of the weekend as well. Who knows? Um, but it's a, a brilliant place to, to look for the stars of the future. No, very exciting uh, place for the stars of the future. You just have to look through the, so the roll of honour and horses that have run um, in this class previously, I mean, you don't go back to 2016 where in 36th place was a horse called Ballamore Class and 38th, Toledo de Cursa. I mean, they've done all right, haven't they? <laughs> Interestingly, their form lines have really stacked up against each other along the way. I think in the horse's first internationals, they again went up against each other at Tattersall's in a one star as it was then. Um, and I think Toledo de Cursa was second or, and Ballamore Class was eighth or something. Um, you know, the, and the, it's great to see the form come through and we've seen some brilliant horses come up the levels. We've seen some brilliant riders come up the levels as well. And this young lady is one that I'm sure we could well see on Irish teams, senior teams in the future because they've uh, excelled at uh, pony and junior level in the past. They have won... Uh, Team medals at uh, three Pony European Championships, had that wonderful partnership with Nono, and then uh, took a team gold with Cleo Ferro at the uh, Euro Junior European Championships at Bishop Burton in 2014. It is Lucy Latter. Lucy comes forward with RCA Patron Saint, an 11-year-old, owned by Alison Crampton by Graffenstolls, and a horse's four-star long debut. Lucy, who has been scoring in the early mid 30s, uh, four star short level of competition, actually went very well earlier on this year to finish just outside the top 10 at Ballon Dennis, also uh, top 20 at Mill Street in the four star short formats, and then uh, completed the Hambro Sport Horses at Bergham International Horse Trials as well. So uh, Lucy Latter, who wouldn't be a stranger to competing here on British soil. She uh, has certainly been over here plenty of times in her career, but based over in Ireland. So just left the, the near hind there in that halt. Scoring for Alex Bragg, 37.2 into eighth on the leaderboard. First overall impressions, Nicole. That was a very nice medium trot. I have to say I'm really liking the start of this test. They come through this shoulder in. It's 
looking for that regularity and bend before going into the other medium trot. Now, how good will this um, extended trot be? It's very expressive. Really expressive. And Lucy's been pretty brave there as well. Early stages, this looks like a test that could trouble the top of the leaderboard at this early stage. Georgie Goss, our leader, 31.0 with for loop. You see the last to go before the first break of the day. Just coming out of that half pass. A little bit sudden into the walk transition. As to almost want to encourage the horse to just put his nose up and out a little bit. Getting a little bit behind the vertical. A little bit stuck. Lucy doing a great job. Lucy can breathe a sigh of relief. The pirouettes are out of the way. Moves into the middle stages of this test. This extended walk, just looking for the nose to just slightly go out and over track. This is really good over track. Obviously we don't have scores, but Oh, this is looking good, Nicole. 31.0 score to beat. You think it's our new leader? At this stage, I'm going to say <laughs> yes. I'm going to say this. I think this, uh, providing uh, Lucy can maintain, I think this will go ahead of Georgie Goss and for loop. I just, at times, they just drop behind the vertical a little bit. The overall picture is very good. Nice positioning in the half pass. First of these changes. These need to be clean and... Uh, oh, no. Quite happened and unfortunately changed in front and not very, very late behind. That will prove very costly. Um, the horse only just... Um, not that long ago, stepped up to the four-star level, has had a couple of four-star short runs. But as we've said, it, you know, the, the flying changes in the test are quite a big ask for some of the younger horses stepping up. And unfortunately, it just didn't happen for them there. What can they do this second, second of them? Uh, just late behind again. That's going to prove very costly. Um, perhaps the changes just aren't quite yet there yet with this horse. But uh, still so much to like for the future. And uh, Lucy Latter salutes our ground jury. Three members of the ground jury. We have Bobby Stevenson, our president. He is at C, uh, Sue Baxter at E, and at M, Douglas Hibbert. Um, so Lucy Latter and RCA patron saint take us to the first break as... Uh, a brilliant uh, first session of dressage here at the Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials brought to you by the Jockey Club. It is Georgie Goss who leads 31.0 with Nikki Cooper, Suzanne Doggett and Lucy Fleming's for loop. And uh, Ben, you're off to go and uh, set up for the eight and nine-year-old class. So big thank you for your input this morning. No, oh, thank you. I'm very much looking forward to the rest of the four days of competition here is going to be great it absolutely is and if you are uh, with us for the weekend then settle in sit back and relax because we have got so much coming your way you will get every single test you will get all the cross country and all of the show jumping and don't forget that uh, today at 12 o'clock as we will each day at 12 o'clock we will be remembering her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II with a two-minute silence that we be held each day at 12 o'clock. And then that will be followed by the national anthem sung by Laura Wright. For now, though, 
we will have a short break. Big thank you to Ben King for being alongside me for this first session of Dressage. And we'll be back after this break.
Welcome back to the first day of dressage here at the Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials brought to you by the Jockey Club. We've had one session of dressage and look at that, five... Uh, four different flags on the top five on the leaderboard as things stand. It is Georgie Goss and Philippe, 31.0, leading the way. Cooley one to many, Dan Jocelyn for New Zealand in second. They were top 15 at Bramham earlier on this year, 33.4. Carden Earl Grey and Kylie Roddy rounding out the top three, 33.9. Grace Taylor, game changer, top 10 here in the eight, nine-year-old class 12 months ago, sit in fourth at the moment, 34.7. And the last to go before the break, the score just in for uh, Lucy Latter, RCA patron saint, 34.8. So that is how things shape up after the uh, first uh, 10 combinations have come forward and we now turn our attentions to the second session of dressage and I would just uh, remind you that uh, at 12 o'clock today, following the very sad news of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, there will be a two-minute silence. This will be followed by the national anthem sung by Laura Wright. Everybody here on site will be observing that two-minute silence each day and we would uh, welcome you to join us in remembering Her Majesty. Uh, riders here this weekend have been uh, invited to wear black armbands. Many of them have been doing so and the flags here at Blenheim are all being flown at half mast as well. Now I am uh, delighted to welcome into the commentary box alongside me for this uh, second session of dressage a lady who has experience uh, a plenty not only here at Blenheim but also at the very very top level of the sport Tina Cook good Hello. to have you with us here I am talking about the sport instead of unfortunately would like to be riding but um, haven't got a horse at this level at the moment so uh, it's great to watch my friends um, and youngsters coming through and seeing how they get on Oh no! It's an hour. We're lucky because we've got you sat next to us in the in the commentary box and, and with everybody along at home. Um, just set the scene for us here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials because it is an iconic location. It's one of those that is so important to the British calendar. What does it mean as a rider to ride here? Oh, we're so lucky in eventing um, that we have such great venues like here at Blenheim. Um, it's a privilege. It doesn't matter how old you are that you can come here on how many times you've ridden here. Um, to be in front of the palace, riding your horse in this beautiful setting. The crowds are unbelievable, especially when they come on cross country at the weekend. Um, it, it, it is what it's all about. It's what you aim for if you're a competitive rider. This is what you're aiming for. And, and for the owners of the horses. Um, you know, there's some owners here that have bred the horses and it's very, very special seeing them on their way to the top end of the sport because the next step up from here is is, is you hope, if the horse continues progressing, um, to a badminton or a burley or, or a world championships that are on at the moment. So um, these are horses and riders of the future, which I'm sure we we, we will be saying quite a lot of over the, over the weekend but this is your time to shine if if you have the ability this is the competitions that you want to be showing the selectors and the world what you're made of and when we look through the the role of honor here in the four star long format last year's winners Yazing and Banzai de Loire will be trotting down the center line in approximately five minutes time over in Protonia at the world championships and it was that Blenheim victory here 12 months ago that really threw them to the forefront of selectors now though we welcome a young lady who was part of the team actually who won team gold in try on four years ago it is Gemma Tattersall and Gemma comes forward with Prudors uh, Flash Cooley, 10 year olds uh, by CSF Mr. Croon. And uh, Gemma, very experienced at this level. This horse just stepped up to the four star level last year, actually went very well in the eight, nine year old class here 12 months ago. Gemma's been riding at the top level now for a number of years um, at the Olympic Games. And to always bringing on young horses, a lot of homebreds. This one isn't a homebred. Prue has based herself and her horses with Gemma and Gemma took on the ride on this horse a couple of years ago now and has had some great results. Um, he's he's shorter, smaller and stockier than some of the horses that she rides, but he's a real little competitor, as is Gemma. Um, she's out there to win every time and she 
would have entered this horse here to be very, very competitive and to, to win a, a Blenheim is is very much on, on her radar. And, you know, he's he's been very, very consistent. He actually comes here off the back of a brilliant podium finish in his final preparation run at third place at Mill Street over in Ireland in the four-star short. And the first of Gemma's two rides, both of whom uh, feature inside the Echo Ratings Prediction Centre um, top five as ones that could take the title here this weekend. And I think she'd really like her chances with both of them. Yes, and, and he's got a great brain. Um, that's what makes this phase of the three-day eventing um, so much easier when you've got a horse that actually goes in there and allows you to ride it. And and he is. He's got off to a great start. He's been very consistent. Um, great trot work. You know, he's not super-duper flash, but he's not doing anything wrong. So from from rider's point of view, you're saying, look, judges he's not got the biggest trot here but he's keeping his head very still he's keeping a very good rhythm um Gemma is always very accurate um those pirates are very good he's just a little bit big there but he kept moving because the one thing the judges hate is when their hind legs get stuck and they and they pivot on the spot so she kept moving there so they should mark well so it's been very consistent and, and got off certainly to a good start so far this horse actually is one who won the Aventus Challenge at Hickstead and Gemma herself actually won two metre 40 classes at Hickstead and pure show jumping last week. Um, yeah, she's loving her show jumping um, part of her, her life. So she, I would say she's almost on a par with eventing and show jumping now. And this horse, you know, it was quick. It's, it's a competitive class at Hickstead and, you know, she is able to ride this horse quickly at its fences so it's a very good jumper as well as doing a good job at, at this phase as, as well and she can really show the difference and that's the thing when you've got a horse that is you know he's relaxed she's prepared him to do his very best in here he can just drop a little bit behind the vertical sometimes where his nose comes into his chest and he just tightens in his neck a little bit but Gemma can feel that and then just softens her hands and he takes his nose out so the frame stays very much up there and in front of you. Can I ask you he's only a small horse he's almost a little bit pony like um as he just comes to the first of her flying changes we'll see this one first before I Nice. Yeah. That was very nice. It was very accurate. It was over the centre line. You see, obviously, the moan line there. You want to be trying to do your movements over the centre line, which she did. And she's got a nice collected canter. And so, therefore, she's got him balanced to, to really show the suppleness. I was going to ask you, he's only a small horse, 15-2-ish. If you look at some horses that are sort of 17-2 in this size arena, how much more time... Does a smaller, more compact horse or riding a smaller, more compact horse feel like you have? Does it make a difference? Do you notice it a huge amount? That was a lovely flying change uh, that Gemma there got lots of elevation through the change. So hopefully we haven't got the marks coming up here, unfortunately, but that should be marking well so far. Yeah, look, he's a smaller horse, so therefore he's he's not going to be so flash in front of the judges. But if you just keep the consistency, which Gemma has done... Um, it, it doesn't matter so much. They have to just be accurate. Some of those really flash moving horses with very big trots, if they have a little bit of loss of balance, that will mark them down. So where they will mark up for where they where they show all the spring and movement, um, the margin of errors can be greater. Well, Gemma Tattersall and Flash Cooley finishing their test. The leader at the moment, Georgie Goss for loop 31.0. That is the score to beat as uh, it looks on the early indications on the marks coming in that Gemma will go to the top of the table just waiting for one more percentage mark to come forwards. And we'll see her again a little bit later on or tomorrow afternoon with Jalapeno, who was actually inside the top 10 here in the four-star long format 12 months ago. Next uh, to come forward is just confirming that 29.9 Gemma Stevens flash coolie for owner Prue Dawes uh, go into the lead. I actually thought that she might have been a little bit further in front than that. Um, you know, really, the horse didn't make any obvious mistakes. Um, she was very consistent, very accurate. Um, I think um, it's it. it 
the, the marks are still quite quite close together, but we've still got some uh, good horses to come. As now uh, we welcome forward Gubby Leach. Gubby rides uh, Sarah and Jonathan Houston's uh, Royal Harvest. This is an 11-year-old by Royal Concord. And actually a combination that won the three-star long format last year at the NAF five-star Heartbreak International Horse Trials have made the uh, step up to four-star this season and have put in some good competitive performances have uh, actually went back to Hartbury this year for the four-star short format and finished seventh. They finished on their dressage score, which is always ultimately the aim, but it is much, much harder to do, particularly at four-star short level of competition. So a real feather in their cap there. Uh, they also completed Bramham in the four-star long format a little bit earlier on this summer. So Gubby Leach and Royal Harvest next to, to come forwards. Gubby, we see quite a bit on the on the circuit now. He's worked jolly hard to be getting to the level he has, getting a team of horses and, and owners. Um, he does a really good job. He's a lovely, lovely rider. This is a very elegant horse. Has He's worked a progression with this horse and he has done Bramham. He's, he's been here and so... He's a horse that is very, very nearly ready to step up. Um, he probably felt that he wasn't quite ready for, for a Burley experience. So to come here and actually be super competitive, he's 11 years old. That's that's a great age um, to be here. It's still on the on the young side. So, you know, he's he's preparing everything for this horse to to go to go and be a, a good one. And, and Gubby. Uh, is, has been very competitive in in the national uh, events in, in the build up to here. So he's he's built up his network of of horses and and experience now, and and is really ready to 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 get a a really good score on the cards. This horse is set off nicely. They're, you know that they're, they're looking relaxed. There's quite a lot of atmosphere in in this arena for the horses. Um, the crowds aren't here yet, but you've still got the the marquees around, so the horses are well aware of what you're asking them to do. And he's kept a nice outline. He's quite a light framed horse, um, and can get a little bit tight in in the neck there, as you can just see. He just slightly dropped behind uh, Gubby. Gubby hasn't got quite as enough. Um, down the rein as he would quite like. Um, you can see just a little bit of a loop in the rein. You say, go on, t take my hand forward. So you're trying to um, fool the judges that you've got a little bit more in your hand than you have. So in this horse's bit of tension, he's rather holding himself. But Gubby is sitting very tall and, and keeping his hands nice and still. And then coming into this walk, um, if you've got a horse that gets a little bit tense there, he rather turned round rather than actually doing a pirouette. He didn't show uh, any suppleness through through his middle. And for some horses that find this difficult, like this of horse obviously does both ways, and he's showing a little bit of tension in the walk through the pirouettes. Um, he literally just turned round. And as a rider, if you have a horse that you know struggles in one part of the test, um, you, you keep it smooth you know except you're going to get an average mark at that don't try and upset the horse by going for an eight but actually getting a three you know he, he he's basically turned around so he'll be aiming for a five I should think um, because he doesn't want to upset for the rest of the test because there is quite a lot of walk in this test so if if you feel that that your horse is is beginning to be aware and been in walk rather a long time um, you just have to sit quietly with him and there he did a lovely quiet strike off into canter which was correct so all all good so far and again being able to really lengthen down that long side he, he did lengthen maybe you could say would like to ask for a little bit more this horse looks very fit and ready to go. And, and where he's showing the judges that he's still got a little bit of tension, he's losing a little bit of the suppleness through through his middle. Um, he's not doing anything wrong. The horse is really trying. Just got in a bit of a muddle before that change where he didn't have the contact. The horse rather dropped off him as he came into that change. Um, so again, just letting the judges... The judges can see that bit of tension. 
a little bit better this way, but quarter still slightly trailing and losing the suppleness through through his rib cage. Gubby is sitting quiet and not throwing any marks away from his point of view, from a riding point of view. There's only so much you can do. Yeah, the, the, the change was okay, a little bit sharp. Um, it wasn't a bad change, but he kept the horse going forward and, and, and that's the most imp important thing. He actually started off nicely in the trot and then he just got a little bit more buzzy in the canter work. It, it, it's a horse that looks like it, I mean, it looks really fit and really ready to go. Gubby's got him very fit. You know, Gubby's quite a tall man. So Blenheim, the cross country is quite hill, it's hillier than you can really appreciate when you're standing here and the horses need to be fit and, and Gubby will be, will know that and this horse will be ready, ready to go. So, you know, he, he he could have been a little bit more relaxed, but he'll be there and thereabouts. It's always the balance, isn't it? Yeah. Ultimately, these horses come, they're primed, fit, ready to run, what, a 10, 11 minutes on Saturday. Um, and we want them to be cool and calm and relaxed and rideable in the first phase. So Gubby Leach, Royal Harvest, uh, says good luck to Ginny Thompson, who will be uh, next uh, down at the centre line. As... Uh, we wait for his score to come in. An update on Gemma Stevens' score has actually just been amended 29.7. So amended in the right direction, at least. Um, but that is the one to beat at the moment. Flash Cooley 29.7 out in front. Now, though, we uh, look to New Zealand and to Ginny Thompson with her own, with David and Catherine Thompson's Capitan de Us. It's uh, a 10-year-old by Cosinus. And uh, Ginny, who's been based over here on British soil, actually, for a few years, came over two or three years ago and uh, was originally based at the yard of uh, former world champion Blythe Tate, but has since set up a really good team of horses over here in the UK. And this is absolutely one she thinks a massive amount of for the future. And uh, the first of Ginny's two rides in this uh, four-star long format combination that actually completed Mill Street, finished in top 25 in their, on their debut at the four-star long level of competition, but have had some really good results at three-star level, including a top 10 finish at Osberton last year. So Ginny Thompson and uh, Capitan de Us are next to come forward to our ground jury. Uh, Bobby Stevenson, president of our ground jury for the United States of America, at C, Douglas Hibbert for Great Britain at M, and Sue Baxter for Great Britain at E. So it's nice to be able to just go into the arena and, and have a trot around the outside, just give your horse a chance to settle. He's only a 10-year-old, so again, one of the younger ones, horses here, and a very elegant horse. You can see that lift in his trot um, it's, an, it's only a, a small horse, but looks very athletic and got off to a, a, a nice start. He's just dropping his head a little bit low. You'd love him to just carry himself there. She's just got his head up a bit more now. Um, he's just sorting his balance out. The life of the event horse at this level can, can range over... <laughs> five or six years if you if you look look after them and you're lucky enough to keep them sound and well so if they just need to have good experiences when they go into the arena as I said you know yes we might have there are the horses doing the eight and nine year old classes and you might have the odd nine year old in the in the long format but this would be one of the younger ones but he's he's very elegant you can see there will be even better to come when he sorts his balance out. He's just a little bit downhill. Um, but when he lifts his head up and actually balances himself, Ginny sits very, very nicely. She's keeping the rhythm and the flows. You can see this horse has got a bit more lift, but more suppleness through, through, his, through his body. There, just losing a little bit at the bend, but he's getting the, the crossing of the legs. That's very natural for him to cross his legs. And when he gets a bit more established, then you'll get the bend as well. And you start all this 
dreaded walk stuff. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of walk. If you've got a horse that's tense in walk, this test has a lot of walk. Yeah. And um, so, so many event horses do find the walk as quite a tricky part of the test. And so, yeah, this, this test really, really tests them. And this horse wouldn't have the biggest of walks. And he's just dropping down behind behind the vertical a little bit. And if you've got a judge that doesn't like that, this test is also a bit of a nightmare because you're always having to do something, turn the horses, so therefore they're still drawn back against you. So you can get marks down from for, for that. This horse, as you can see, his over track from the print, his hind foot from to his front foot isn't that great. So he hasn't got the biggest of walk to show the difference between the medium walk and the extended walk. So Ginny has to be very subtle with her rein length to, to, to show the difference. <clears throat> but he is walking. He's not broken yet. And she just keeps him walking forward to the canter. Yeah, lovely. That was very nice. You know, she did a good job with that walk. Um, and then now she really needs to show a difference in his canter and see if he will take his head up and out. That, you know, the pole needs to be at the highest point and, and his, he's just dropping down a little bit. Is that extended canter almost quite useful to help them push up and out at that point? For some horses, the slightly sharp ones, they might just think they're a rocket and go <laughs> off down there. You have to be quite subtle with your move uh, with your gear change um but like there she was being quite cautious to be honest she could have because she could have shown more um and there because the canter wasn't as connected as, as she would like and the contact had dropped behind her she then didn't get the change you know maybe this horse is at a stage where they're still establishing uh, the balance in the canter and so therefore the changes are a little bit hit and miss and sometimes as a rider you have to accept that okay our changes aren't established yet but this is a really good jumper the whole Blenheim experience will be very good for them he rather jumped into that change and was late behind um that you go well look let's accept maybe our dressage will get better uh, in another year's time but the horse will gain so much from the jumping phases and you know he's done a nice test but but he'll be a horse more for the future so uh, Jenny Thompson Capitan de Us uh, finish uh, their test here in the four star long format at Blenheim, pa Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials brought to you by the Jockey Club just got a, a score in for Gubby Leach 34.2 goes fifth as things stand at the moment so uh, the leader is Gemma Stevens, 29.7 with Flash Cooley. They are the ones to beat the only sub-30 score that we have had so far. And don't forget that you can uh, see all of the scores for yourself, eventingscores.co.uk, to see them in full. And we will have this weekend for you the free coverage of uh, every phase for both classes here at Blanham Palace International Horse Trials, both the four-star long format and also the eight- and nine-year-old class as well. Uh, Tina Cook sat alongside me in the commentary box as next to come forwards it is another 10 year old this one is a pen hills optimax owned and ridden by tom grant and tom owns this horse alongside sophie arnold a four star long debut for this 10 year old by pacino tom who is getting himself again a really nice team of horses he's had some nice additions to his string this year he's based in gloucestershire and this, the first of his two rides, also comes forward with MGH Tokyo Phil, former ride of the individual silver medalist from the Tryon World Championships, uh, Porig McCarthy, which was a new addition to his string this year. Penhills Optimax, uh, though, recently uh, stepped up to the four-star short level of competition within the last 12 months, finished just outside the top 20 in the eight and nine-year-old class here last year but have had uh, some good cross-country runs at Houghton Hall at uh, Summerford Park at the three-star level as well as uh, over in Ireland a little bit earlier on this year. So uh, Tom Grant and Penhills Optimax, uh, the next to come forwards. And 
it's yeah as you said tom has been building up um his his team of horses and you know when you say team of horses you also say team of owners that are there to support you and he has been producing these horses and it's lovely to see uh, you know a 10 year old at, at this level and you know he looks a nice horse tom's tall so for these tall guys that you know they're having to look at a particular type of horse for them sometimes the bigger horses are later to develop um and take a while to get here but this horse to be competing here as a 10 year old um is is exciting for him and he's cantered around the arena nice and relaxed he stood still in his hold that's always get off to a good start it sounds so sort of obvious well why can't you teach the horse to canter and stand still that is sometimes easier said than done when they uh, feel the atmosphere of being in, in an arena so it's, it's off to a, a good start it's very different isn't it coming down that center line and and you know then cantering to halt to doing it outside in the warm-up <laughs> Yes, no, exactly. And he was a little bit conservative in, in his medium trot across the diagonal. The horse didn't really stretch forward and show much, much lengthening. So he was having to be cautious from from that point of view. And same again here. It's it's only quite a short diagonal. So the horses are established at the at the medium trots. You can really go for it. He he had to be sort of subtle. So again, I would say he's gone for let's play safe for a five or a six rather than going for a 7.5 or an eight. And, you know, this horse is only a 10 year old. Maybe he's not established and ready for that sort of um, test. So they're going in here looking really for for a clear round. And to give the horses a good experience. And, and that is massively important, obviously, Tom will be coming here to do his very best and his very best is is all that the horse is, is capable of doing at the moment you know he's he's a really attractive horse he's a nice horse just showing a little bit of um, stiffness through his body doing the going doing the half passes there but he didn't break he kept um, kept an outline as he was going across could they have been bigger steps yes they could have been but the horse is, is having a good first experience and now he's just got to keep the contact and the horse's attention through these pirouettes and that's fine he's kept moving um, he kept turning he kept moving his legs which is very easy for them to plant their hind legs and then pivot no that's good little bit more bend needed but actually in general that was good and it's easy sometimes to, the, some horses can sort of tilt their head when they're doing those pirouettes but actually um, Tom kept that very well now this is quite a good bit you can let them just stretch and you want the horses then to breathe. You get some horses with a little bit of tension that just hold their breath. And actually, when you go into the walk and you're allowed, you can just give them a bit of rain. This horse is rather jibbing on the rain as he's come back. So the contact has gone a little bit inconsistent. So he'll be thinking, oh, just walk, just walk, just keep the walk. Because if you can keep the walk, then you can at least keep the marks Um coming and therefore he knew that that canter was coming so he had to just let it go slightly early but that was well ridden by Tom because he he was being very sort of subtle about what he was doing on top and and knowing his horse he was having to be soft and gentle with him because it's an attractive horse actually when he established himself and and actually relaxes see he's got plenty of supple suppleness as you can see there yeah he's got tense with it and, uh, and almost the horse is saying, I know it's kind of half past. I'm going to do a little bit too much um, and as in his tension. But actually, he's he's and he's missing that change because the horse has got into a bit of a muddle. Um, so that 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 was a shame. So now he's just got to sit nice and quietly again and just see if he can just get the horse to relax and, and get back thinking, thinking with him and listening, listening to his rider. He's just showing his, well, he's just inexperience really um, the, from the horse's point of view of, of being in this arena and 
you know, I think this horse can, you know, see, he can do his changes. It was a little bit short, but he allowed him to ride him and ask for the change. So it's a case now of let's get through this. We're getting towards the end. It wasn't a disaster by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a horse that's just showing his naivety and, and learning on the job. How big is the step up from a three-star test to a four-star test? Because it feels like actually a couple of those movements, notably the flying changes, we were talking about it a little bit earlier on. You know, there are a question that seemed to um, pose plenty of, of problems for horses. Some horses find them really straightforward. Others find them much more difficult. Do you find, obviously, as you bring a horse up the levels, that actually the three-star to four-star is a big enough jump? I think it. I think it's a fair enough jump. Um, but it, for a lot, some horses can do flying changes when you break them in as a four-year-old. You know, it's just natural for them to change, and and some find it more difficult if they don't have a particularly connected canter, um, and that that's what you need to work on. But also, the biggest step is is to the step up to the venues we're coming to. Some of the two-star venues and three-star venues. There isn't much atmosphere, you know, they're a little bit quiet. You don't have the flags. You're, you're not in an arena where you feel so exposed um, or the horses feel particularly exposed. So then they lo lose the rideability. So then the tests become more difficult because the horses lose the ri rideability. Riders would have practiced all these movements over the years. And especially in the build up to here would practice running through the test. Now, some horses benefit from running through the test and practicing and knowing the movements that are coming up and some you wouldn't. And again, that's down to the rider's um, skill and, and knowing their horses, what suits their horses um, for the last day of, of having the surprise of, of, of doing a, a particular movement or not. But it, it's, it, it's it's knowing knowing your horse and 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 the horses some have a more relaxed mental attitude towards uh, dressage and and some obviously brighter some could be say the same could be said for riders too Tina <laughs> for for sure um and and some will spend a lot of time doing their dressage training and some less. <laughs> <laughs> Here is Alex Hewell with the 13-year-old Elfield of Voyager by Graffenstolz, owned by Dr. Sheila Rowe, an accommodation that actually come here having had a really good result at, Victor, at Bramham long format, four star, sorry, earlier on this year, they were 11th there, jumped a double clear, just added a handful of time penalties, scored 39.4 in the dressage on that occasion. Yeah, it's a really, really elegant, classy looking horse. And, and Alex has done the preparation before now um, by being at Bramham. So that's a really good stepping stone. I want to be on a par here because uh, the Bramham arena is is quite atmospheric. Um, so he's really consolidating his Bramham form here at Blenheim. And I'm quite sure we'll be thinking with this horse be a Babington horse for the step up for next year because you know he's 13 he'll be 13 going 14 next year and he's given the horse every bit of opportunity by by competing at Bramham and, and Blenheim and, and actually they're two events that I would want to put into my horse's CV before stepping up to a five star. I was going to say, do you have certain events that you would particularly like to tick off the list before to n help you know that your horse is ready for the big ones? Yes, I mean certainly Bramham built built quite beautifully by Ian Stark. Um, he over all all his years of experience has ridden round so many challenging cross country courses and and asked so many questions and he's a great he's a rider that's moved on from from a from a great rider to uh, a a great course designer as well and has had so much respect from the riders um in the build, courses that he's built and we'd love him to be building more i mean he frightens us to death most of the time <laughs> to be honest but they're courses that you know that if you go out there that you can really ride and so bramham is on the radar for us as riders if you're thinking this is going to be you know i want to be a five-star rider this is potentially a five-star horse um and very much 
Blenheim as well, but Bramham, because of the terrain as well, makes it a good preparation before. Alex is doing a really good job on this mare, actually, because she was a little bit tense at the early part of her, her test. And actually, the walk so far, he's doing a good job in keeping a lid on it. Yes, he has, and 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 for her, the the pirouette, she she she's a little bit tight in a pirouette. She got a little bit blocked, um, but he did a good job of of keeping her on on the go. Um, a pirouette is quite d down to personal opinion. Some sometimes judges um, can differ a little bit with their with their marking with the pirouettes. So the m most important thing is to is to keep the forward momentum that the horses don't suddenly dry up and and block against you as as you're making making the turn um, and they can get distracted and it's keeping the horse's attention in so much walk. Um, but she's you know, a really, really elegant mare. And you can see there the lovely outline that um, she can produce. She looks very well. She looks very well muscled up. Alex has done a, you know, a very good job with her so far. And he's just keeping her listening to him, but sitting up. I mean, the riders nowadays do sit so well and, and there's so much training going into uh, riding the test now. So there, unfortunately, he, he set her up to do the change and the mare just wasn't listening with him and was probably looking at what was going on in the background and just was not off the aids at all. So that was really frustrating because it looked like she was going to nail a good one and then nothing happened. So she won't get a very good mark for that, unfortunately. So now he will maybe try something a little bit different a rider you've got, you've got to be thinking about how the horses are reacting and there she just drew back and got very very tight she did the change when she got there but unfortunately spoilt it um in in the approach to it so you know this is working progress for for her because if she just stays that little bit more relaxed she could do a super test I was going to say, it feels like all of the ingredients are there, but actually it just is a case of fine tuning the sort of the keeping her calm. If she's calm, actually the movements come really nicely. As soon as she gets that little bit tense, it starts to prove pretty costly on the leaderboard. Alex Hewell and Elfield Voyager here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials brought to you by the Jockey Club finishing their test at 29.7 the score to beat by Gemma Stevens and Flash Cooley as the winner of this class 12 months ago Yaz Ingham Banzai de Loire part of the British team out in Protoni del Vivaro for those world championships being run here this weekend and uh, Looking forward to seeing more stars of the future coming out of this class because, as we said a little bit earlier on, you know, this four star long format has really produced some top class combinations of the future. They've gone on to future championships, big five star performances. Uh, C Cookie, a five star winner with William Fox Pitt, won this class as well back in. Uh, 2011 um, there's been a whole host of, of really really big names taking the top spot and it's exciting to see where they may go next uh, interestingly all of the last 10 winners of this four star long format have been inside the top five after dressage so that is where we're looking for our winners uh, to be after the first uh, of the phases now though it is the turn of the next combination to come forward, and it is Scott Wallace. Scott rides Locarno Star. Locarno Star by uh, the uh, prolific show jumping sire Locarno, owned by uh, Haley Sankey, and uh, a four star long debut for both horse and rider here. So, wishing them the very, very best of luck. What a, what a great place to come and have your first four star. So um, exciting for him and on another 10 year old. So lovely to see these young horses coming here. Um, I don't know Scott that well. He looks a tall man and he's got very long legs to wrap around this horse. So um, this will be interesting to see how, how, they, how they go and how the horse Copes are riding in this atmosphere. Score just in for Ginny Thompson. Capitan de Oost, 34.3. They've gone into sixth. And uh, 
Alex Hewell, 39.6. So sub 40, I think he'll be pleased with that. Pretty much on a par with what he scored at Bramham uh, a few months ago in the horse's last run at the four-star long level. Tom Grant, Penhill's Optimax, 40.4. And the horse just she he started off well and then the shoulder in just lost a little bit of consistency and to be able to get the very good marks you do the shoulder do the shoulder in and then have the horse really in your reins so that you can move them away from the side of the arena to get those first few really good steps and this horse isn't a natural in in the extension so really didn't show that much so he's just gone for safety and and getting across the arena and shown a a, a small amount of difference yeah this horse you know finds it quite difficult to lengthen so it's it's going to be he's he's looking for the sort of average marks so far a little bit hurried and you'll see better extensions but again this is their first time at this level and it's a case of getting through this part getting through the competition and then you can really work on you know over over the winter and you get find what you've got to to work on and for the from the horse and and the rider's point of view just to be competing at this level you've got the horses qualified and it's been really difficult this year with the with the ground um, being so dry with the lack of rain obviously we're eventing outside and some venues do have lakes and access to water some don't so you have to pick and choose where you where you run your horses on the, on the ground so some combinations probably haven't had the the best um, preparation than that they would like um, but it's been very much on people's radar uh, the, the pirouette he did it kept it very smooth and and did a tight tight turn it kept moving so yeah you'd like a little bit more bend through the horse's middle but really not too bad but as i said you know in the, in the preparation and when you start off the year you have your sort of goals where you want to go and if you've got a, a good cross-country horse and to get the experience that you need to, to get here has has taken a lot of planning and, and the rain has literally just come in time for Blenheim I tell you what it's green green grass we have not seen grass this green in a long time but David Evans and his team have been working really hard and actually the rain that's come has really helped it as well uh, this combination actually have had some good results at um some big venues this year. They've really picked their, their sort of campaign carefully and a horse that actually went clear cross country in the eight and nine year old class here 12 months ago. So has had some Blenheim experience, albeit in the four star short class, but they've completed Chatsworth, uh, Barbary and Thorsby all clear cross country. So some very good experience at uh, some different venues. And, and that is really important to give your horse you know every chance to do the very best uh, job that you can do when you get to this level you, you know you want to, to come here and, and be be competitive to do as much as you can the horse just lifted and just resisted again before before that change but actually the change wasn't wasn't too bad when he got there but just showed a bit of tension beforehand it's keeping it very level and and tests going from one movement to, uh, to the next so you know it 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 wouldn't take a lot of work in fact it's canter work has been um better than almost his trot work they just he, came up against the change but actually did a, a did a clean change he did that with the other change as well he does the change but just sort of makes his opinion on it known slightly yes just you know, thrown a few marks away here and there, but overall, actually, you know, the horse has, has done his done his best and and has got a good attitude towards doing a test. You can see he's walking out now in a quite a relaxed way. So there will be a lot to, lot to work on f for there for the future. But lots to like as well. We'll wait for a score for Scott Wallace and Locarno. Star in just a moment, 10-year-old uh, by Locarno as uh, 
We just to remind ourselves of how the top of the leaderboard looks at 29.7 Gemma Stevens, Flash Cooley, the one to beat as uh, waiting for a score to come in for uh, Scott Wallace, which it will do in just a second. We had that score of Alex uh, Hewell and Elfield's Voyager, 39.6. Well, just a reminder that uh, following the really sad news of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II last week, uh, every day this week at 12 o'clock uh, here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials, there will be a two-minute silence, and this will be followed by the national anthem sung by Laura Wright. Uh, we would very much invite you uh, watching at home to join us in observing that two-minute silence at 12 o'clock each day. Now we welcome forward uh, Charlotte Parry Ashcroft with her own Will Jack B. King, an 11-year-old by Jack of Diamonds. And uh, accommodation that come forward to present to our ground jury in uh, this uh, four-star long format at Blanham Palace International Horse Trials. And this accommodation that actually uh, finished just outside the top ten up at Blair Castle in their last run at the level. But went very well at Bramham to finish uh, inside the top ten. I think that was in the uh, under-25 class uh, for Charlotte. And uh, good to see her coming forward. And I think her first run at uh, Blenheim for both horse and rider in this four-star long format. So Will Jack B. King, an 11-year-old, uh, owned by Charlotte herself. Next to go here, myself, Nicole Brown. Tina Cook sat alongside me. This will be... Uh, so that was good. And hopefully she'll get a better mark for that pirouette than, than the first one. And then now you want to allow the horse to lengthen his frame into the extended walk. He looks like he's got he he's he's bright but actually really willing to to do his best and and to allow her to walk. Well, that's good. Yeah, she's showing a difference. The horse has kept a nice still outline, so she just has to be subtle when she's taking the reins back, which she is. You can just see just a little playing with the rain. Annoying when they do a little trip like that, but you <laughs> just have to ignore it. You can only do do what you can do just to prepare him before the strike off. Yeah, she was she rode that all that walk, walk very very well. You know she's going for it, which is lovely to see in a in a young rider. Um, we haven't seen you know much much of of her, um, so she's looks like she's worked very hard at uh, getting this test as good as it can be and that was a good uh, canter right half pass a little bit of tilting in the horse's head but she got good good crossing good bend through the horse's middle and when the horses get tense then that can be quite difficult to show and a lovely change no really nice so far the canter work you know, he's he's not the biggest of movers, but he's keeping a very nice outline. She's sitting up uh, lovely and straight, lovely and elegant. And uh, really, she's looking up where she's going and really asking and, and working for every every movement. And the horse just every now and then tilts his head a little bit and she corrects it. So she's really doing her best to get every mark she can there she was a little bit late for asking the change and so it wasn't off her aid so that that was a shame that last change and then unfortunately in this test well I suppose it's quite good for some you only get the two changes you don't get a chance to um, have another go and say look actually I can do it better than that but that was a really lovely test and she's giving him a good pat and actually what a really lovely horse I loved his brain and and she did a really good job of of getting every mark she could get she got a 35.8 at Bramham and uh, that was earlier this summer at the four star long level so we'll wait for her score to come in in just a moment a score is in for uh, Scott Wallace and uh, Locarno Star and it looks like they will go into 16th position 41.9 but uh, we've got 
Four combinations before the next coffee break and one of those is absolutely one to keep an eye on for the top of the leaderboard because the Echo Ratings Prediction Centre favourites for this weekend, Sarah Bullimore and Coraway, will be in after the next combination to come forward. So lots to look forward to here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials. And uh, as always, we're very grateful to uh, all of the sponsors, many of whom we'll mention throughout the weekend, that enable these horse trials to go ahead. The Jockey Club having taken on running the event last year, brilliant to have them on board. And in my mind as well, really bringing a, a, a fresh, a breath of fresh air to the sport of eventing and exciting times for the future. Um, but they've brought some really exciting new sponsors to the table and some sponsors that we perhaps haven't seen so much in eventing over the last few years. So very exciting times for the sport and uh, please do support them if you can. We'll mention many of them, such as Boodles, uh, Paul Roger, of course, big supporters of uh, eventing, but uh, also, interestingly, Winston Churchill, who had such a rich history here at Blenheim Palace and actually he's buried just down the road in Bladen. His favourite champagne was Paul Roger. I'm with you, Winston. That's what I'd say. <laughs> um, we <laughs> I don't know where you get all this information from, but it sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, next uh, to come forwards, it is uh, Rosie Thomas. Rosie rides her own Fly the Flag. This is a 12-year-old by Rebel Flag Mount and a horse stepping up to the four-star level uh, long format for the first time. So uh, Rosie Thomas next uh, to come forward. And this is a combination that actually have uh, seen uh, some good results so far this year. Clear cross country at Bramham in the short format four star, but also at Chatsworth in the short format four star as well. So uh, two uh, big, decent four star tracks to have put them behind them coming in to uh, Blanham Palace International Horse Trials. Rosie has been working really hard over the years at this sport. She wouldn't have the biggest money uh, backing her. So she has, you know, some horses that can be a little bit tricky and she really works away and works really hard to get the very best out of these horses. And she has huge amounts of experience. She's very competitive and this horse, you can see, wouldn't have the biggest movement uh, for the first phase, but she hasn't shied away from that by taking the horse to the best, some of the great venues to get its cross country. And she is a very quick rider cross country. And she was riding at uh, Badminton, uh, sorry, at uh, Burley just a few weeks ago and was giving a horse a super ride. It just got a little bit tired towards the end of the course, but she had she was brave and and teaches these horses and really brings them through she does so well and this horse it's going through its test but you can see that it's an inexperienced horse just lacks a little bit of contact uh took down the rein so therefore can sometimes sort of come up and look around and not have the the flow that you would like um but you know it's she's a it's a mare i believe no, it's not. It's a gelding. gelding. Um, but you can see he's he's getting a bit tight and then he might just now come back into the walk and let's hope he will just take a deep breath and allow himself to show a bit more movement that he's got so far at the moment. He's, he's going through the mov movements, but losing a little bit of contact. So therefore, um, won't be getting the very best of marks. Uh, that was okay. Just, you know, kept moving just about. Um, the, the hind legs just need to patter the ground as, as you're making the turn. You can't make too big a turn. Um, so it's quite difficult to say to the horses, what you know, I want you to turn around, but I also want you to keep moving your legs. So you have to wrap your legs around them to say, oi, just keep stepping through. And Rose is just asking the horse to take bigger steps forward in the walk and is staying in the walk so that's that's good you really don't want any breaks because your marks will drop down but Rosie would be realistic with this horse coming here it's obviously a good good jumping horse I bet she is fast and therefore she was there she was very clever because the horse nearly went off onto a left lead uh, strike off but actually corrected it just in time so that was fine. 
I suppose as a rider, I can see that because I can I can feel it uh, when I've ridden, you know, a tense horse. You just have to get through the motions and make things as straightforward and as simple as possible. Rosie is possibly grimacing um, to get this horse just to relax and to be able to get through the motions, through the movements even. I was just getting a bit tight before that change. It wasn't really listening. And it's so difficult. You don't have long when you make that turn. You only have three, four strides before asking the horse to do the change. And if they're not really with you because they're showing a bit of tension, you're asking them to do these changes and nothing happens. So you can feel a little bit silly sometimes when you're saying, OK, change. And the horse is like not listening at all. And that's what happened there. The change were not off the aids at all. But she's just going through the test. Look, she she's not silly. And there, the horse really swang, swung sideways and lifted its head in the air and keeps shying away from that corner. Look, he's got more and more tense as the test has gone on. She's gone, got through it. You know what? She'll be looking forward to the next two phases. And then the dressage can be worked on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, fly the flag. Rosie Thomas set a debut at the four-star long level for this horse, Rosie, who uh, many of you will probably remember. She had that wonderful partnership with Barry's Best, uh, was Pathfinder at a couple of the big five stars on a few occasions and always had such a great cross-country record as well. So uh, Rosie will look forward to the jumping. A score in for Charlotte Parry Ashcroft. Uh, will Jack be king? 37.2. So that sees them just outside the top 10 in uh, 13th as things stand at the moment. I think she wishes you had been judging that one, Tina. Yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed for her on that one. Um, I, th I thought it was going to be uh, a bit be be better mark. But uh, hey, look, it's it's the judges that they're the ones that are there judging. We've got a very exciting horse coming through. And in the whole of the, the class here... There are, as we are seeing now, world-class combinations and some newbies, young ones. So there's such a range of um, standard uh, uh, of horses that are performing. Um, but I thought Charlotte did a very good job and she should be very proud of what she's, what she's done. But I'm sure she'll be out there now watching some of these other guys going to... Um, see where she can improve. Well, this combination is one that we are very much looking forward to because Sarah Bullimore comes forward with her own Brett Bullimore and the Q Jumping Syndicate's Coraway by Ballad de Rue out of Lily Corinne, who was the horse that Sarah rode at the 2015 European Championships and a combination who are very capable of scoring very low in the first phase. They've been as low as 19.6 at the four-star level. That was last year at the uh, Hambray Sport Horses Burgeon International. They actually went to Burley for the five-star, led the first day of dressage 22.5, picked up an early 20 penalties and opted to reroute here. I saw the horse actually last weekend at Cornbury and he had a very, very easy spin round the uh, open intermediate to take the win there as his final preparation and looked unbelievably class. They took the individual bronze medal at Avanche in the European Championships last year. And I have to say, just absolutely setting the arena alight in the early part of this test. Obviously, Sarah would love to be at the World Championships. She hasn't been selected. The Brits are so strong at the moment. Went to Burley, as you've already said, had an early mistake. So there's a lot of pressure her coming here. You might look on the outside and go, well, she's just coming here. This will be a doddle. But actually not. I mean, a beautiful extension across the diagonal. She knows this horse can be leading this class. And she's going out there to prove that he can do. She has come here to win. People will expect her to. So there will be pressure on her as much pressure on her here we well, see he dropped off behind her there so that was 
a, a silly mistake, a frustrating mistake. He literally just, she just went to soften her contact on the horse to change the bend and he went well do you want me to walk it's like no um so you sort of think oh well it's been it's been to european championships actually it, it to drop them down uh, it, it will be pressure in its on in itself it was interesting i was chatting to sarah last week about it and and actually kind of there is still pressure but Actually, it's really, who has she got to prove it to here apart from feeling it herself? They're both more than capable. And almost taking that pressure off of not chasing a world championship slot actually frees them up slightly to um, just go out and enjoy themselves. Yes, but every time when you are got to the, the very top of the sport that Sarah has and, and on this horse... It is just as difficult. They're always saying is there's one thing getting the next minute staying there. And and it and it is difficult and you do feel the pressure like there in that second pirouette. The horse lost his concentration and and slightly came up and wasn't looking. So there are little things, you know, obviously there's part of this test most of this test which is quite beautiful, but you can see the little bit of lack of concentration. And this horse, he is little, he's sharp, he's talented. So he's not a complete push button and she wants to have as much of a head start uh, to this competition so she can go out and, and win it. Yes, the pressure is off, but she'll be wanting a win here to get back into the selection's eyes for next year. Um, and every competition you do with a horse of this standard, you feel the eyes of the world are watching you. Just again came back to her a little bit before that change yeah, you, i almost feel that actually she's almost trying too hard because she knows that this horse can be leading this class with burley you are against other five star campaigners here this horse does stand out and um, we've obviously got pippa pippa funnel on grafton street to come that is a five star winner um t tomorrow but um you know there've been a few little mistakes here where it hasn't gone completely fluidly um but it, it will still be a very good mark but they'll be just when it comes to that last day, it can be points of difference and that can still come back down to this day. And I just stand still, good boy. Yes, lovely. And it's interesting, isn't it? You know, that I think will still go well out in front. Uh, the top of the leaderboard, 29.7 is our leader at the moment. But the expectation of the score that could have been is there. Exactly. And you could see by Sarah's face there that she possibly has gone, oh, there are a couple of places that she knows that they could have done better um, that has just kept them off the really, really super, super top, top marks. Um, I, I'm not saying that, that is, that's going to be one of the leaders. Yes, it is. Um, but the horse just just caught his attention and and even though he's he's a world class they're a fabulous combination they are an animal when it comes down to it which we mustn't forget and he just showed his brightness a couple of times there that you think god you've been in arenas more exciting than this but he still wants to have a little look around you know that's what makes him a, a, a great horse is is because of his his sharpness and and what and aware of of his surroundings we're just waiting for that final score to come in for Sarah Bullibore and Coroway looking to uh, take over the top of the leaderboard uh, perhaps not by as much as we first might thought they might but uh, it will still be a, a very good score at the level as the one to beat is 29.7. That is Gemma Stevens and Flash Cooley for owner Prue Dawes. Next to come forwards, it is uh, Balin Train Incentive. Kaya Mansby Svedberg for Sweden comes forward with this horse she owns herself alongside Arla Jurgenlink by Innocent. And the horse's uh, debut at the level, Kaya's uh, debut at the level as well. As uh, 27.8, Sarah Bullimore and Coraway, they uh, go to the top of the leaderboard as things stand at the moment. Rosie Thomas, a score in 
for her of uh, 45 point ones. So they go 19th. Yeah, I mean, I think from Sarah Bullimore's point of view, yes, I expected her to, to take the lead. Um, but Gemma Stevens' test was very even all the way through. And uh, Sarah Bullimore and Carouet's sh showed some exceptional parts of the test, but equally had the mistakes. And, and, and they become more apparent when you've got a particularly flash um, moving horse. And so... Yes, I, I think that would be about right when you're looking at the schools. But I think the 27 is, is, is there to be beaten. I think, you know, we, we could have, there are a good combinations coming through tomorrow that, that could go ahead of that. So this horse, n nice type of horse, just starting his test. Looks like he's got a, a, a nice nice brain. He's got his ears pricked. He's looking what he's doing. Yes, she's riding him in, in a double bridle, which actually suits him. He's got a, you know, he's a bigger type of horse than, let's say, Karui, who's who's very pit, pretty and very petite. Um, this is a, a bigger stamp of horse. And actually, he carries a double bridle very nicely. He looks very elegant in his double bridle. He's got a, a, a bigger head. Um, and actually, they look nice with a, with a double bridle. And, and it makes him look very elegant. There, he just dropped behind her a little bit. Oh, I think she's actually made a mistake. I wasn't busy. I was so busy talking about his, her double bridle. She comes through into the um, half pass. Actually, she could nearly have winged that. She obviously had a completely blank moment. Um, if she'd just picked up the trot, I think she probably could have got away with without without an error. When you have an error, you minus two marks from every judge, don't you? So yes. in this test, it's minus six marks. Yes. So, you know, at a, at a national event, you, you've only got one judge. It's not the end of the world. But when it comes to this, this level... Um, it can be um, very expensive. But it, every rider at the top level has forgotten a test at a crucial point at some point, And you'd be lying if you didn't admit <laughs> to it. Um, you can be so busy thinking about the horse and, everything and, and how is it going or it's feeling a bit different today. And you're saying, oh, my God, where do I go now? Where do I go now? And... Um, it's just an absolutely hideous moment in your it's, life. It's like coming down the centre line, <laughs> left, right, left, yeah, right. 50-50 chance, <laughs> just go with it. Oh, no. But again, you just have to, um, I try and visualise, try and visualise the test and visualise if you're having a blank moment, where should I be, where should I be, or where have I seen other horses? I like to be able to watch um, somebody go through the test more from that my point of view that if I have a blank that I can picture where I'm meant to be rather than what what letters I'm meant to be at anything to make it to get you out of a situation that you might put yourself in and there's another of those combinations that's actually coming to the four star long this time having gone well 12 months ago in the eight and nine year old class because they were top 20 here last year and it and it is a it's a really great concept um, having the eight and nine year old classes because you get some really, really competitive horses. And, and as a rider, if you've got a nice horse that's gone advanced and is, is ready to make that step up, but not quite ready to, to go and do a long format at, at four star, um, it's a great class to do and to think like especially some of these riders now that are coming through and go, right, well, they've had a taste of the main arena and now they're ready. And if you've been able to slot in a Bramham as well before that and, and had the spring that you want, that this is a, a, the perfect stepping stone. And this horse has gone a little bit inchy, a little bit tight in its canter work um, and has rather lost his, his length of stride. So it's gone a little bit tight Um so he's rather going through the motion. The flying change was a very subtle change of leg. And there he's rather dropped off behind her. So what we're saying, drop behind her leg. So there, she won't have got the change because he's got so tight. Um, 
he's not really listening to her legs for when she's trying to create the elevation and lift in the canter. He's rather just purring over the ground. So, you know, he, he, he showed his tension in, in his length of stride. But she's, you know, he stood still, he's behaved himself, but obviously when he gets tense, he gets a bit heavy in her hand, which is probably why she's riding him in the double bridle. But she started off, actually, in the trot work. It, it, looked, it looked very, very elegant. I was going to say, you know, sometimes, actually, when people get nervous, they talk a lot and they get really fizzy and other people go very quiet and actually become a little bit more dull to the senses and dull to the aids and actually that horses would be exactly the same and and perhaps the case here we've seen a couple getting very hot in that atmosphere um, but actually went the opposite way yeah exactly and and as a rider when you're working out your partnership or working out with that horse what how much work do you do with them what bit do you ride them in what do you do is is what actually brings them out of the shell like you would do as you quite rightly said like a human and that horse went a little bit in himself and and didn't didn't show off and and didn't uh, allow himself to be able to his rider to be able to ask the movements of him but that you know it's it's stuff that needs to be worked on yes all right of course you want to be doing it now this minute but maybe they're a partnership that needs to be working on that um, next year to, to do better tests because they're more than capable of doing it and just need a bit more experience um, and to be able to relax to do it. Absolutely. Well, next to go, it is uh, JP Sheffield. JP rides Elizabeth Goldby's Schindler's Boy, an 11-year-old by Lancelot, and a four-star long debut for this horse, who was actually uh, top 10. He finished eighth at House and Hall in the four-star shorts earlier on this year, only stepped up to the level at the beginning of 2020, but had some good results at the three-star level last year, including uh, top 20 at Burgham. And top 20 at Osberton towards the end of the season as well. And JP has always been a brilliant producer of young horses. And it's good to see him now with a number of horses back uh, at the top level. And uh, there's certainly one that he thinks an enormous amount of. So uh, JP Sheffield and Schindler's Boy, the last to go before the next break. You could see JP has ridden at the top level for many years now. His general body language was quite relaxed when he came in. He patted the horse. Even if the horse was being a bit tense, his his persona was of being relaxed. And when the, they rang the bell and the arena hadn't, be op hadn't been opened, he walked and turned around and everything was very relaxed about the way he was asking everything of this horse. This horse looks exceptionally well. The sun was shining on him then and just quite beautifully turned out. The plats are absolutely immaculate. He's, he's got off to a nice start. Um, the horse is very lovely outline, um, which is important to be able to do that, to get the shoulder in, which seems in relative terms, quite a straightforward movement, but it's very easy for the judges to see if you drift off the line around the arena. And he showed a difference. You know, his, the horse hasn't got the biggest of medium trots, but he showed a difference when he came back to the markers. And then now he's got an extended trot. See if this horse can just get a little bit more lift. Not really, it's a little bit hurried uh, uh, across the diagonal. He hasn't done anything wrong. He'll just get a nice average mark. When you have a horse that hasn't got the biggest extensions, do you just go full pelt in your medium anyway, and hope yeah. that, uh, and just hope that the judge doesn't notice the difference because they're not right next to each other? Because a medium is less than an extended, yeah. so at least try and if your horse does enough as a medium trot, do your very best at the medium trot because you know your extended trot isn't going to show much difference. Um, and then try and disguise it by trying and showing a good transition into the extension and back from it so that the judges will go, OK, not great, bit average, but they've shown a difference and the transition. So we'll give them a little bit more, a little extra mark. 
Um, and so it's it's ring craft uh, on knowing on the horse you're on. Right, that horse really got stuck behind and totally. So that that wasn't a very good pirouette. Um, J. Poo will know that he will have felt the I'd horse has rooted its hind legs there. I'd say so there now, is a skill in itself in being rooted. Yes. <laughs> so there he made the turn a little bit bigger so that the horse kept moving its hind legs. So. That was a very good example of a not a very good pirouette and 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 the rider going okay i'm not going to make that mistake again um and allow the horse a slightly bigger circle so important isn't it as a rider to be able to adapt in the arena yes and and again it's with with experience you sort of feel that you've got to sit still and 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 the judges not seeing what you're trying to do but equally you've got to Right, the movements. You know, the judges will mark you if if you are dealing with a situation that you are handed by by that horse. If if for some reason it's doing something a little bit different, a little bit sloppy into that strike off, he could. If he just asked one stride earlier, the horse would have probably have jumped into the strike off a little bit more. Um, but JP is riding very quietly, very subtly. He's trying to keep the test. Very smooth. It'd be interesting to see if he keeps the bend through the half pass now. That's fine. You know, he could have just slightly got his trailing, but that's um, me being picky. Um, he's just keeping the horse collected as he's coming round, but he now wants to go into the change. He's just changed slightly early. He was almost being a little t bit too protective as he came off the side of the arena. But it was a nice, clean, clean change. JP keeping this horse very collected through everything that it, that it does. It's a lovely picture. It's a, it's a very, very nice horse. As I said, looks exceptionally well. You know, it's, it's, it's new to, to, to this, this level. And he did a lovely change. He was very accurate. Um, he, you know, for some horses, they would probably go one less stride from the edge of the arena. But JP kept it very, very even. And the change was very, very smooth. So, he, you know, he should be well marked through that. You can just see on the centre line how the horses, if they just slightly lose their balance, how they can step, step off that moan line. But JP, I would have thought, would be very pleased with the horse. You know, that was really exciting that he's gone there, he's kept it very consistent. That will be a very competitive test. And, and this horse, you know, he could be there and thereabouts because he's a good cross-country horse. And JP has huge amounts of experience as well to guide this horse through to a competitive results at the end of the week well jp sheffield and schindler's boy finish their test and uh, that takes us to the next break it is sarah bullimore Coraway who lead the way 27.8 ahead of Gemma stevens flash cooley 27.9 and our leader after the first session has dropped to third georgie goss for loop on 31.0 uh, so we will have a short break now but uh, do remember that we will be back up uh, a few minutes before 12 o'clock, because at 12 o'clock each day here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials this week, there will be a two-minute silence remembering Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, and this will be followed by the national anthem sung by Laura Wright. We would very much welcome you to observe those two minutes of silence to remember our incredible Queen uh, at 12 o'clock. So we'll be back just before 12 o'clock after this short break. A big thank you to Tina Cook and we'll be back soon.
following the sad news of the death of Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II, a two-minute silence will now be held. This will be followed by the national anthem sung by Laura Wright, and we invite you to join us to mark the passing of a remarkable queen. God save our gracious King, long live our noble King, God save the King, send him victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us, God save the King. Uh, the national anthem being played in uh, memory of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II after that two minute silence. So uh, the leaderboard for the uh, four star long format here, Sarah Bullimore, Corroway, 27.8 at the head of proceedings. Gemma Stevens, Flash Cooley in second and Georgie Goss uh, for loop rounding out the top three as things stand. Uh, in that last session of dressage, it was uh, Sarah Bullimore, and uh, Gemma Stevens, who uh, made the biggest impact on the leaderboard and uh, a score in for a uh, final competitor before the break as well of J.P. Sheffield and Schindler's Boy. 
and he will add a score of 36.2 to sit just outside of the top 10 as things stand. So we now turn our attentions to the next step. Uh, nine horses to come forward that will take us up to the lunch break and we've got a real variety of countries represented here from Italy, uh, the Netherlands, uh, Great Britain and New Zealand and sitting down alongside me in the commentary box I'm delighted to welcome Ginny Howe. Good afternoon Nicole. Ginny it is very good to have you with us. Um, you have been uh, spending the morning on the eight nine-year-olds uh, commentary. What have we missed? Well, it's been great. Um, there's been some really exciting tests, um, some lovely horses, and it's hard to believe some of them are only eight or nine. Um, the, yeah, there's, Tom Jackson did a really great test, um, just to name one. But uh, yeah, it's been great. It's been a really good morning of dressage. Well, he currently leads Tom Jackson with Margaret Peets at Newton Belize on a score of 29.2 ahead of Bill Levitt. Sligo, Candy Kane, Sam Lissington and Ricka Ridge Ricochet in third at the moment. So that is how things stand in the eight nine-year-old class. Ben King and guests, uh, I think he is just joined by uh, Alice fox Pitt. will be guiding you through all of the action over there. Whereas myself and Ginny Howe will focus our attentions on the four-star long format. And getting us underway, it is uh, Lauren Lillywhite and Hassian who uh, come forwards after the break and uh, this accommodation that actually went very well uh, to complete at Hartbury in the four star short format a little bit earlier on as this summer as part of their final preparation for here completed at Houghton and Thorsby Park as well having stepped up from three star level last season so Lauren Lillywhite and Hassian next uh, to come forwards yeah, it's lovely to see Lauren here uh, with a ride yet again um, at four star level. You know, she's a great rider. She doesn't have a huge string of horses um, and she just keeps on ticking away and uh, she always seems to get one back to four star level. So it's great to see her here. And she's made a positive start. Just there finishing off the medium trot that she's going to come round to do her second shoulder in. It's a big rangy horse this. That's it, just establishing the angle and maintaining it and then moving off into her medium trot. So you're uh, rewarded for, for marks for not only for the movement, but the tra transitions in and out of the movements. And there she made a really good transition back after her medium trot. And then again, a good transition into her extended trot. But there we just see she just lost a little bit of balance through the second half of her extended. And a tricky uh, half pass movement here. So left half pass around that left leg. And then here it's the change of bend and the change of direction. And we want the shoulders leading um, we don't want those quarters in front and that was a nice change of direction from her. Question for you. We've seen a couple of double bridles this morning. The the gap between the snaffle rein and the, the double bridle rein on this bridle feels quite large. What's the difference and what how does that compare? Between sorry, between the between the snaffle ring and the bottom of the curb the ring, the it curb. feels quite a large gap. Yeah, so really you want to be riding mostly on the snaffle. Um, and it's 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 personal preference for, for those people that do choose to ride in a double bridle. But yes, yeah, you can see she's got a shorter snaffle rein and she is majority riding on that snaffle rein. And that's the important thing. The judges don't want you to see it, don't want to see you holding onto that pellet rein. There, she just did her, her pirouettes and now she's into that extended walk. So you want to see the march in the walk, the over track and the relaxation through the horse's body. For me, I think the horse could just take his nose a little bit further down and out. I think he was just momentarily having a peer at what was going on in the other eight and nine year old arena for a second. <laughs> There's so much going on and just keeping their focus when you're in those whiteboards is a lot easier said than done. <laughs> And then right on the marker into the canter, 
and she goes straight into that extended canter. So everything comes up quite thick and fast here in this test. And then back into the collection. And it's about preparation here, getting the angle. You saw there, she deliberately really got the angle and got the control of the shoulder into that half pass. She read that really well. And then into the half circle. Um, during the eight and nine year olds test, we've some we've seen some variety of flying changes. Um, um, there, you know, he just he came up a little bit in his in his contact and in his frame, which meant he was a bit tight through his back. So not the cleanest of change, but it happened. And then there, she's got the control of the shoulder, the angle. He just anticipated that a little bit, but it was a nice change. It was, you know, it was smooth. Lovely halt. Very square halt. Yeah, lovely. And big pats as well. It's a combination that actually a personal best in the first phase of 30.8. And that was at Barbary Castle in the four-star a little bit earlier on this year. So could yeah. well be seeing something similar again. Yeah, absolutely. One to watch. You know, he's a big rangy horse, but his, his general outlook and his rideability was very nice. Um, he painted a really good picture um, and it was smooth. Um, just the, the first change, but then the second one was, you know, very smooth. Um, so I'll be waiting to see what her score is going to come through as. Well, we will watch this space introduce you to our ground jury president of the four-star long ground jury at sea, which is the exact angle that we get to uh, see all of our competitors from Bobby Stevenson from the United States and then at M, Douglas Hibbert from Great Britain and at E, Sue Baxter. And uh, I think uh, two combinations just coming out of the arena now. Just having a quick debrief and looking like she will be um, just getting the first two scores in. 65.42% from Douglas Hibbert at E. 61.67% from Sue Baxter at M. And it looks like it might be 66% at 66.46%, uh, I should say, from uh, President of our ground jury, Bobby Stevenson at C, will confirm that for you when the mark comes through for Lauren Lillywhite and Hassian. As uh, next uh, to come forward, it is for the Netherlands and it is uh, Althea Bleekman. In fact, it's not for the Netherlands, it's uh, for Great Britain. Uh, and it, uh, not Great Britain, Italy, <laughs> Italy, Italy, Italy. We'll get there Here in the end. Go. Third time lucky, Jenny, third time lucky. And it's only Thursday morning. Uh, it is Roberto Scalisi, a man who I really should have recognised. He <laughs> actually won best dressed at the first horse inspection yesterday, looking very smart in a three-piece suit. And uh, looking very smart as he comes forward here today. I think rides is part of the Italian Air Force. Um, no, he's not. No, no. Um, no, he's not Italian Air Force, but he is Italian. Um, and uh, the horse that he actually rides is Alamein um, uh, for longtime supporting owners, Ros, Ros and John Hayward. I was um, looking at the crest on his hat, which was new, and I was thinking I'd missed something. But, no, uh, I don't. I mean, I'd like to think I should know that, <laughs> but I don't think he is in the Air Force. <laughs> I'm going to well, ask him now. Well, who knows? Who knows? Um, uh, just speculating wildly. And this is a horse, actually, that started out his career on the racetrack. Yeah, and he ran many times as well. So Bert has done an absolutely fantastic job with him. And Bert is very good on the flats. Um, he he really is. He is a perfectionist. Um so uh, I know this horse can pull off some really, really good tests. Um, so this is going to be an exciting one to watch. An accommodation that actually went clear cross country at Bramham a little bit earlier on this year. Perhaps had a show jumping round to forget on that occasion, but still had a very good finish and went very well at Hartbury. Put in a, a superb clear round in the show jumping there over what was a really tough track, actually, in the four-star short as part of their final preparation here. So Roberto Scalisi and Alamine next to come forward. 
Yes, Bert's worked really, really hard on his show jumping. Um, it's not a phase that this horse finds particularly easy. I imagine um, when you've run fast and quickly for much of your life at the early part of, of his career, actually, it's quite difficult to... Yeah, absolutely. Um, but then it does come into play when he goes cross country because he is speedy. <laughs> Very intrigued by the crest now. Bert's definitely going to be laughing at me for not knowing <laughs> knowing the answer, but he's not in the Air Force. Absolutely not. I don't know. I'm going to find out what that crest is. That's the first report, question. Report back. I report will. back. Uh, so that was a nice start there. He's based pretty locally to you. Yeah, really local to me. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, again, he's another local-ish rider. Not quite as local as me, but... <laughs> How local are you? About 10 minutes. Okay, if that. Very, very close. Yep, very, very, close. very close. So it's just keeping the rideability of these horses in this atmosphere. You know, they're super, super fit. And, you know, it's, it's hard. But you can see here, Bert's maintaining that really well. Nice shoulder in into the medium trot. It's just keeping that suppleness over the back as he makes the preparation for his extended. And you push, you can see that horse just really reaching the ground cover and the elevation there. You know, which is something like sometimes with the thoroughbreds, they don't have naturally with the German bred horses. It's almost bred in them, but this horse is thoroughbred and that was a really good medium. Into his half pass. And that change of direction, again, it was really smooth. It looked effortless. As he prepares for the walk transition and forward into the walk, exactly. And the pirouettes is just keeping the relaxation so that the horse doesn't tense up or anticipate, you know. Some of these horses have done this test a number of times and mine for one tomorrow afternoon does anticipate the pirouettes which makes the movement actually even trickier. But there he just kept the movement. The horse didn't get stuck with its hind leg. And then as he goes into your extended, extended walk, the reach, the stretch and the over track. And you can see he's relaxed there, the rhythm just nodding his head a little bit. Just saying, Bert's there, just saying, keep focus, stop looking around, don't look at things. Stop looking at the eight and nine year olds in the yep. arena next door. You can't go it, and join them. How, how does it work? Because obviously when you go into a national competition, there's normally lots of arenas. At the very, very top level, you can be in a, an arena on your own. And actually here, we've almost seen a couple of horses a little bit distracted by next door as opposed to being comforted. Yes, um, you know, when we do the nationals, there's normally sort of three more arenas in there, you know. Um, but I think there's just so much going on on the outside. You know, we've got the flags, we've got the flowers. And uh, on that note, I might just add that the dressage arenas are looking amazing. My mum has been spending all week putting these up. Your mum's <laughs> built the dressage she arenas. Has, Fair play. Yeah, her and her team. Um, yeah, they have been here all week. We um, will be sure to report back that you did. Yeah, uh, you, <laughs> you did put your thanks in. <laughs> so there we saw Bert just do his right half pass keeping the bend through the horse's body as he makes the turn back now to do his flying change. Okay, it was smooth, yeah, possibly half a stride late behind, um, but it was a smooth, non-explosive change, which I have seen throughout the morning. <laughs> and there, into that half pass once again, the other direction. And then as a rider, you have to just be really aware of riding straight down the centre line. The judges are looking for the straightness in the horse's body before you make that turn back. Into his change, lovely change. And that's the idea, these movements are meant to look effortless. Um, and that was a really nice change. 
But it's a really talented rider, isn't he? He's he's um, always been a very good producer of horses and of young horses. But this is the horse that's really sort of taken him up the levels and giving him the first taste of the four star. Absolutely. It's fantastic for him to have a horse at this level. And, you know, and the owners, you know, they've been long time supporters of Bert and of eventing. Um, and it's 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 great for him um, to be here. And this horse is... Um, this horse is really talented um, and so yeah I'm sure he's gonna be he'll be pleased with that I'm sure he'll find things to work on but uh, cross country will be his day well we'll look forward to that on Saturday there's Lauren Lily White Hassian the combination that we just saw before Roberto Scalisi evidence that they have gone into 10th 35.6 good enough to see them go into 10th as things stand uh, Sarah Bullimore Coraway the individual bronze medalist from the European Championships in Avanche last year the ones to beat 27.8 Gemma Stevens Flash Cooley 29.7 and Georgie Goss for loop 31.0 the top three as things stand at the moment moment next uh, to go it will be uh, grand cord althea bleakman i'll get it right this time uh, <laughs> and this uh, a combination that uh, know each other very very well althea who actually uh, used to ride for team gb in her pony days now uh, has been representing the netherlands for a good number of years and at grand cord of course she knows really well has produced up the levels had an absolutely uh, heartbreaking fall having jumped a brilliant clear round at cross country at Bramham and they fell at the last um, on landing so oh so frustrating for her um, but have otherwise uh, they completed here 12 months ago had a couple of uh, penalties on the cross country but uh, did get the completion on the board and uh, jumped clear at Aston Lawl's four star short at the beginning of last year as well so Althea Bleakman Grand Cord next uh, to come forwards and this uh, a eleven year old by Granix. So she's just doing her first shoulder in there. Just really focus on trying to keep that angle and the consistency of the angle in the movement from marker to marker. And then into her medium trot, keeping the rhythm. And then back into the shoulder in. It looks like it found it, it find it's a little bit easier that way. And then into that medium trot, ground cover. As she comes through the turn now to set up for the MXK extended trot. So there she just took the time to get the horse straight for asking for the push and the movement. A score just in quickly for Roberto Scalisi. Alamine, 33.6 into sixth. In fact, into fifth, even better. Yeah, perfect. I think he'll be very pleased with yeah, that. Yeah, I think he will be. Yeah. And there. Althea's just doing her first half pass. And there you can just see it's so hard to do that change of direction. Uh, it's just keeping control of the horse's body as you do it. And she almost, into her second half pass, the quarters were leading a little bit. Um, just lost the control through the turn after the first one. But there nicely into the walk transition. See how these uh, pirouettes go for her. keeping the movement of the hind leg. So the idea is that the hind leg almost steps around on a little circle um, and they don't get stuck. So they're better that way. This horse has a really rangy walk. You can see the over track already. The softest through the back, taking his nose down and out. Beautifully plaited tail he has there. I've just it's been a few it. very well plaited tails actually this morning. It feels like plaited tails went out of fashion for a little yeah. while. They're making a comeback they and I'm I'm all for it. Yeah, no, they are. They look amazing. 
all for it if I can actually do them. <laughs> 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 and they're just a little muddled into his first counter transition, uh, but then quickly gets it back. And you know, like I said before, the movements come up thick and fast. Um, so Althea did a really good job there. Um, it wasn't the transition that she probably wanted into canter, but then she made a comeback for the, her extended down that long side. And there you're just wanting to keep the jump in the hind leg. Yeah, good. And then riding straight, keeping the nose of the horse in the center of his chest there. But you have to be careful as well and be a bit tactful with it because the horse knows that there's a flying change coming up. Um, and sometimes if you slightly change the bend, bend uh, they think, oh, let's change. Um, but there, she did a lovely flying change, we just saw. This horse really does have a look of concentration on his face. He's really with her. A little bit early. Keeping that straightness there. You can just see him trying to put his quarters to the right and then Althea just has to straighten him up. Um, but there, big big pats for him. Lots to like, and actually, yeah, lovely. A personal best at any level with this horse of thirty four point one. So uh, certainly, uh, I think their their tests have been a little bit uh, changeable at the four star level. Um, scored forty one point three last time out, and I'd very much like to think she'd do much better than that here today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there were some really really nice pieces in there. Um, obviously. The odd, you know, the odd mistake, um, but that's dressage. There's always room for improvement, but I think she'll be sh she should be really pleased with that. He just remained rideable throughout. Well, we'll bring that score for you as soon as it comes through. Uh, just a reminder, Roberto Scalisi for Italy with Alamine. They've gone into fifth, 33.6. So... Uh, if you are just tuning in to the four-star long format here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials, brought to you by the Jockey Club, then a very warm welcome to you, myself, Nicole Brown, and uh, Ginny Howe here to take you through this next session of dressage to the lunch break. And uh, we've still got some big names to come, the likes of uh, Jesse Campbell and Matt Heath in this session. And a little bit later on this afternoon, Elizabeth Power sends a fine. Sam Lyle is a really interesting uh, combination for Australia. BF Valor, they've won so much over in Australia. We haven't seen a huge amount over the, here on British soil of them. Very much ones to look forward to. Uh, Felicity Collins, RSH Contendor, uh, definitely looking forward to them. And Dirk Schrader, Casino 80, the vice champions in the German National Championships will be in the last session of dressage. Now, though, we turn our attentions uh, to Lucy Robinson. Lucy comes forward with Cosmic Charm, an 11-year-old owned by Michelle Bartlett. By Future Illusion, a horse that has started uh, at this level once previously. And that was actually at Blenheim here 12 months ago. They jumped clear across country on that occasion to go on to complete. They've had some good results at the three-star level, including top 15 at Houghton Hall in the long format three-star last year. Had a bit of a break from international competition in the build-up to this year's event to very much focus their attention on national events coming forwards. So uh, Lucy Robinson, Cosmic Charm next to come forwards. We saw a few horses actually um, that had done that, actually just focused on national levels um, and then come back here to do their international. Um, I think it was at Rianne Smith actually chose to do national events um, and save the horses and bring them here. We're so fortunate in the UK to have such a strong national circuit, aren't we? We really are, yeah. I mean, there's so much to choose from. Um, so there, Lucy's just made a really nice start. Um, this horse has got a great hind leg and she's just done a lovely shoulder in there into her medium trot. She's coming round to do her second shoulder in. And you can just see the rhythm just doesn't change in the angle there of the shoulder in. The rhythm just stays the same. And then an expressive medium trot. I noticed as she was cantering around the arena, 
He's got a, such an active hind leg. <laughs> um, you can see why he's got quite a fancy medium trot. Um, and here we go. She's going to come round to her extended. I think she could be really bold with that. Yeah. Just trying to keep that rhythm all the way across from marker to marker. Very blood looking horse this. And there she goes into her half pass to the left. That change of direction. I should be a pro tomorrow when I come to do my <laughs> test. <laughs> Practice we'll be preach, watching. Right? We'll be watching. It's much easier sat in this hot seat, trust me. Oh, yes. <laughs> and then nice walk transition here. Keeping the rhythm. And then the slight collection here before she does the pirouette, keeping that hind leg moving. So that's where you just want your left leg to keep saying hind leg, keep moving. So they don't get stuck and pivot on that hind leg. There, you see he just got a little bit stuck there through that turn. And the horses do anticipate those movements and it can be very frustrating <laughs> trying to be like, no, we're not doing it, honestly. <laughs> He's definitely got a bit of a spring in his step. <laughs> She's doing a good job to keep a lid yeah, on it. Yeah, she is. Just went to pick up marginally early before the marker. And there, down that long side, the judges are not only looking for the ground cover, but also the straightness in the horse's body. Which I guess the judge at M, which is Douglas Hibbert, gets a great view of the straightness, very little view of the ground cover, whereas Sue Baxter at E can't see the straightness at all, really, but can get a great view of the ground cover. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And so that's why we do sometimes see differences in the marks from each judge. That's a good half pass that she did there. Ooh. Expressive change. <laughs> <laughs> Elevated. <laughs> She's riding this really well, though, because sometimes the changes can upset the horses. And when I say upset, they find them, I mean, by them finding them a bit excited. Um, but then she just gets the rhythm straight back. And there, you just saw him just anticipate that. So it was a couple of strides early. And they're just flicking his quarters in. So she just want to be get him straight, get him controlled through that outside of his body for the center line. Again, some lovely, lovely bits. Um, I'm not sure what uh, he usually scores this horse um, for Lucy, but um, there were some really good bits. A little bit of tension creeping in in places. They scored 37.9 here mm. last year, which would be their best at, at four-star long yeah. level, obviously. But then I say their best, it's their only at four-star long. Yeah. So um, they've been as low as 30.6 internationally, but that was in a three-star long format. So right. very different question being asked in a three-star to a four-star. Uh, interestingly, we've just had a score in for Althea Bleakman Grand Court, and actually they score 36.0. So go into 13th. But I think uh, Althea will be pretty happy with that. In fact, Lucy's score has come in already 36.1. And she goes uh, just behind Althea on the leaderboard. So she goes into 14th. It's still Sarah Bullimore who leads uh, with uh, Corue on 27.8. Ahead of Gemma Stevens, Flash Cooley, 29.7. Now it is the turn of Lizzie Boff. Lizzie comes forward with uh, Be Exclusive. And uh, 
this uh, horse who is 12 years of age, owned by Lizzie herself, by Bazaars Exclusive, and a first-time run at four-star long level of competition for both horse and rider. Lizzie based up near Newark in Nottinghamshire and has actually been sub-30 on this horse, albeit in a three-star. They scored 37.5 last time out at Hartbury, had a good double clear as preparation for their run here. Would be a horse that is particularly good in the show jumping Um has been clear and inside the time cross country though even at the four star short level of competition had some really good placings including a sixth place finish at Burnham Market a couple of years ago I think that was the year that the eight nine year old class was held at Burnham Market uh, and that, that horse would have run in that um, and then they've been uh, clear cross country at Bramham this spring as well so uh, good bit of experience on the card and Lizzie has been getting some really good international results to her name as well up the levels to sort of three and four star level with this horse but also with a number of other horses in her yard yeah and that's it's the experience as well isn't it and the mileage at four star short level that is going to have set her up here to compete in her four-star long. And a lovely expression on this horse's mm. face because he really wanted a jolly good look round coming down that centre line into the halt. <laughs> yes, he has definitely got a smile on his face and he's like, everyone look at me. <laughs> and Lizzie's just keeping his focus. It's very expressive in his trot, that medium trot. Nice angle there in the shoulder in. And then again, the expression in his trot. He's like, look at me, everybody. <laughs> horses love to perform, don't they? So, I mean, some horses do. They really do rise to the occasion when they come into an atmosphere. Yeah, they really do. And like the atmosphere here at Blenheim is amazing. Um, and he's certainly enjoying his dancing in the whiteboards, let's say. And the rhythm there, it just brilliant. She just kept it from marker to marker. The accuracy was great. And as I said before, the expression and in the extended trot. Super into there. She rode that really well through the turn, got control of the shoulder, good angle. And then again, good switch of direction. Many, many plats, beautiful plats in this horse. <laughs> Jazz looks like might be a little bit on edge at the beginning of his walk. Yeah, just a little bit of tension creeping in there. Good job, that, good job to keep yeah, moving. Yeah, she did keep. Yeah, she did keep moving. No, did a really good job there. And then here, she's just going to really hope that she can keep him settled for that extended walk. She's just on the verge of thinking, "Oh, shall we jog?" She's just got to keep him settled, chilled. She's quite tactful here, uh, so she could have had a slightly more length of neck, but I think sometimes it's a bit like, um, maybe not, <laughs> not quite as much as we could, um, just to prevent that jog. Better in that half, half um, circle there towards the end. And she actually just came up for the counter transition a fraction early, but I think we'll be very pleased to get into it. Yeah, absolutely. He's been looking forward to canter. <laughs> it's quite hard from our angle to tell about the ground cover there in the extended. But there, nicely into her counter half pass. And there you could see she just corrected him. He wasn't completely straight as she got onto the centre line. So she did a subtle correction. Very nice, well written.
and the natural activity that this horse has. You can see he's, he's got built-in expression. He's trying really hard, mm. isn't he? Because he, he really is. is enjoying himself, but actually he is knuckling down yeah, he is. to the task yeah. at hand. Yeah, he absolutely is. Well done. Really well ridden. Yeah, really well ridden and nicely presented. Be exclusive and Lizzie Boff finishing their test here in the uh, four-star long format at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials brought to you by the Jockey Club at the second year of organising these horse trials uh, and it's great to have the Jockey Club involved in the sport uh, of eventing. They obviously have a huge, huge wealth of knowledge of running at major sporting events, the likes of the Cheltenham Festival, but it's great to see them on board here at Blenheim. As uh, next uh, to come forwards, it will be Tim Jeffings. And Tim rides uh, Gaston. As uh, a score for uh, Lucy Robinson and Cosmic Charm is confirmed now at 36.1. So they go into 14th on the leaderboard. Uh, Tim Jeffings uh, next to come forward, as I say, Gaston is uh, an 11-year-old that Tim owns himself alongside Emma Bryant by Sanyo. And a horse that has uh, a good bit of experience, actually, at the uh, four-star long level of competition, or a good number of starts, I should say. Um, four starts, uh, just looking for a first uh, Blenheim completion, a first Blenheim start for the horse. Uh, horse has been uh, top 25 at Cornbury last week in the uh, three-star as preparation for their run here. And uh, also completed Thorsby four-star short earlier on this spring with a clear round cross-country. Tim, a former winner of the Mark Todd uh, Bridging the Gap scholarship as well, and is a rider that has a really nice team of young horses coming up through the levels. I know he's got a number aimed at the Young Horse Championships at Osberton in a few weeks. And good to see him getting some more mileage at the four-star level. Ginny, did you run your Blenheim horse at Cornbury? last week um no i didn't because we saw a lot of riders sort of using it as a final preparation run and um actually david evans designed track good ground conditions uh, there was a a number of riders i think that saw a number of other people doing it thinking, Phew, it's not just me <laughs> yeah no it's it, it, it's a hard call i think quite a lot of the horses that were running in the eight and nine year old class did run at cornbury because obviously they're just doing the four star short here um but i actually ran my four star long horse at blair Okay. Um, which was a few weeks ago. Um, but yes, obviously, similarities in course, ground, um, and obviously, designer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This horse is built quite uphill, isn't he? He is really built uphill. Yeah, he is. Um, and I think, uh, so he's got, um, a, like looks like it's a nave, a happy mouth type bit in. So I wonder sometimes whether... Tim struggles to get him to take that contact. He looks very light to the rein. Um, there we just saw him doing his shoulder in and then a very, very uphill in his medium trot there. Yeah, Tim as a rider would just be encouraging him to take the contact. You can see he almost just comes back at him a little bit on occasions. Nice extended trot there. Really forward and positive test this. To his half pass, then the change of direction. Keeping the horse around that inside leg and the crossing of the legs. Uh, 
keeping well read in there. Keeping the activity, looking around. You can see Tim just there looking around for that pirouette and the turning of the front end around the hind quarters. Straight into the extended. It's a half circle R to S. Encouraging the horse to just take his nose down and out. You know, and some horses, they all vary, but you can see this horse is very soft in the contact. Um, some can get a little bit strong, some are soft, it, you know, and it is purely on the horse. Um, and there's, you know, there's no fault with either way. Um, it's just how you train them. Um, so, yeah, like I said, Tim needs to encourage the horse to take the contact out and be consistent to that rein. Nice extended canter. Here he comes into his half pass. Good bend through the horse's body. And then those straight strides. As he comes in to do his first flying change. So the horse just came up a little bit there, but actually the change was good. Um, a little bit of tension and looked like he possibly anticipated it a little bit, but then nice execution of the change. Moving sideways across the arena to your left half pass and then the straightness in the horse's body for those straight strides down the center line. little bit of anticipation there he's like change is coming change is coming <laughs> it's a lovely looking horse this though a little bit of a abrupt halt transition um but they're nice nice some again some lovely parts to his test um i'll be interested to see how the judges mark him well, just having a score in for Lizzie Boff be exclusive and actually go second, 29.6. So Lizzie wow. will be absolutely delighted with that. Actually, one of our judges, uh, Sue Baxter at E, had them above Sarah Bullimore and Coraway. So uh, wow. they're our current leader. Very so I think nice. she'll be absolutely delighted with that. Yeah. And I think um, it's going to be pretty close to a personal best at the level um, for Lizzie. Almost a personal best for the horse, any level. 29.5 is their personal best, any level. 29.6 here. I think she'll take that uh, into second. So. Uh, behind Sarah Bullimore, Coraway in very good company. Gemma Stevens, Flash Cooley completes the top three as things stand. And we saw in the last session, Alamai and Roberto Scalisi move into the top 10 as well as uh, Capitan de Us and uh, Ginny Thompson. So that is how things stand at the moment. Nice international feel to the top 10. As uh, we've got three combinations to go now before the lunch break. And if you are just tuning in to Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials, then a very warm welcome to you. Myself, Nicole Brown and Ginny Howe sat alongside me as we look forward to uh, the rest of the competition. The actual record uh, dressage score in the uh, four star long here is 21.2. That was set by Chris Burton and under discussion back in 2012. Chris Burton actually holds the record dressage score in both the uh, long format four star, but also the uh, short format four star too, uh, because uh, the leader, the leading dressage score in the uh, short format four star is a 21.9. So uh, Chris Burton, a uh, five star winner, medalist at uh, Olympic level as well. And can those records tumble here this weekend? Well, they remain intact for now. As next to come forward, it is uh, Imo Brook. Imo with, I have to admit, a horse that I really love. Particularly look out for this one in the cross-country phase on Saturday. It is San Solo. And this, the 13-year-old by San Amor. Four-star long debut for both horse and rider. And so we wish them the very best of luck. 
combination that actually uh, went clear across country at Hartbury and Burgham as part of their preparation for their uh, first four-star long here. We're top 20 at the Hambro Sport Horses Burgham International Horse Trials at the end of July. Not uh, not not her ideal halt, not the one that she was hoping for there. He just almost wobbled and fell into it a little bit and then put his quarters to the left, <clears throat> but then recovered. And now she's gone into her shoulder in. It's a very striking looking horse, this. He's got all the presents. Really lovely there into her medium trot. And Santa Moore, a thoroughbred stallion, I think. So he can certainly gallop. Yep, he can. Certainly can. And we're seeing that. We've seen so many variations with a lot of sort of warm blood breeding. And then I think thoroughbreds are making a bit of a comeback. <laughs> oh, she just comes through the turn there gets straight and then pushes there for the extended. Again, a really lovely rhythm here. Into the half pass, keeping the angle, keeping the bend and the crossing. Just needs to keep him forward. He anticipated that a little bit and then there was a bit of confusion. He was like, and halt and forward and <laughs> a little bit of tension there. Again, again, almost did exactly the same thing. Just got a little bit stuck. Yeah. And as riders, we practice and practice these tests. Um, and sometimes you can always practice them too much on the horse because then they do they do remember, you know, they do anticipate. Um, Would you be a fan of riding through the test? Um, I do, and I tend to do it on other horses as well, not the ones that are doing the competition. Um, you know, I think it's important. So my horse used to struggle with the flying changes, and I used to practice those where they are in the test so that he does anticipate them a little bit because he was often going disunited or just not changing at all. Um, so, yeah, I do think to an extent it's good to practice the test. Um, there we just saw um, Imo's horse just get a little bit uptight into that counter transition. A bit of a, bit of a confused transition, but then got him back down to that extended ground cover down the long side. And she's going to come into her half pass. So just keeping that rhythm. like. And you can be tactful, you know, like she... Uh, uh, oh, that was a shame. Uh, with that counter transition not going quite to plan. And then as a rider, you'd be like possibly not as bold in your extended canter. Um, just to be a little bit tactful with it. And here he's just getting a little upset with those flying changes. Bit of confusion going on. A little bit nervous for a second. Yes. <laughs> Don't want to jump out of the arena. Um, so that's obviously a movement that he does struggle with, um, with those changes. Ooh, 
nevertheless though you know she's here starting her first four star long and there's a lot to come from from these guys um this is their first test at this level and you just wonder how much underlying tension there was because actually the first part of the test he was really listening and then just seemed to get a little bit on edge after the walk and unfortunately it proved uh, pretty costly to them but to Imo Brooks and Solo, there's still plenty to do this weekend. Lots to jump out there. David Evans at his cross-country track on Saturday, I'm sure, certainly will play its part on the leaderboard. We've got pretty perfect conditions here today, actually, for eventing. We were a little bit overcast. It's a, a fair old breeze, which has actually just dropped slightly in the last hour or so. And uh, it is somewhere around the early 20s, I would imagine. As uh, next uh, to come forward, the penultimate rider before the lunch break. And it is a man who represented New Zealand at the Tokyo Olympic Games last year. It is Jesse Campbell. And uh, Jesse comes forward with Cooley Lafitte. There's the horse that uh, actually went out to Haradapan for the uh, Nations Cup in uh, August. Went clear and inside the time in the cross country there. And uh, has jumped clear at uh, Bramham in the uh, short format four star and Houghton Hall in the short format four star as well. First run at the uh, four star long level for the horse. And I know a horse that Jesse thinks a massive amount of Cooley Lafitte uh, by Jetem Flamenco, which was Billy Toomey's uh, very impressive show jumping sire. Yes, that's um, yeah, impressive breeding there. Um, owned by Jay Jaffa and uh, Jesse who got great pleasure last weekend in watching his former top-level rider Amsterdam actually take the Junior National Championship at Cornbury with young rider Charlotte Bull. That's fantastic. So he's now an owner as well as a, a top-level event rider. I imagine the nerves were entirely different. <laughs> nice positive entry there. Jesse, just trying to maintain that angle in the shoulder in. It's quite a few horses making their debut four star long here. It's a good time of the season, isn't it? it you is, know, they've yeah. had the, the whole summer to consolidate at four star short level and uh, ready to step up but with enough time to make a plan B absolutely. if it doesn't go to plan. Yeah, absolutely. The extended trot, Jesse kept really good rhythm and ground cover from marker to marker. And I was talking a little bit earlier about the accuracy. You know, that's what the judges are looking for that. You know, when it says the movement should be done at a particular marker, that's where we have, as riders, have to be super, super accurate in doing so. Do you, ha do you train on test riding? Is there anybody you go to to specifically work on test riding? Um, no, not specifically. I go and I'll be do having a lesson during the independent movements and then maybe at the end I did have a test run through uh, with my trainer, Henry Boswell, uh, who's also locally based to here, um, just so that he, he can pick up on little little bits, you know, like with the MXK extended it is to that marker. It is 2K, not before K. <laughs> he rode those really well, that first pirouette. And there you can just see him getting the bend in the horse's neck, keeping that right leg on there, and the horse just stepped through last minute. <laughs> big horse this he's some um, well yeah jesse is unbelievably tall he's about six foot five ish there is there is a, a small competition between i think jesse campbell will rule in and william fox pitt as to <laughs> who is the tallest because um they're they're all pretty tall but uh he works hard i mean, i think as a tall rider there's obviously benefits and advantages to it but you then work on your fitness and your balance and everything to make sure that you can support the horse as much as possible. Absolutely, yes. And there's many riders now that really do focus on their fitness as well as the horses. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, for one, be 
a little bit guilty in the past. I've really focused on keeping the horses super, super fit and not necessarily myself. Um, but now it is something I am fully aware of and that I do do a lot more. It's, it's funny, isn't it? That, that sort of philosophy at the end of the day, riders are athletes mm, as much as the exactly. horse. Yeah. This test is painting a really nice picture. It's very rhythmical. There, Jesse just keeping that straightness so the horse doesn't anticipate this flying change. So they was stride late behind, um, but executed the change. There, just needs to get that angle, the crossing in the half pass to the left. We've seen a few horses in that half circle just almost stutter in their canter. Oh, oh that was exciting. <laughs> just I think kicked against his leg, I think, there. I'm just checking. They have all shoes left on. I think they do. And then well into the halt. So uh, Jesse Campbell and Cooley Lafitte uh, finish their test as we look for a score for Immo Brook and uh, San Solo. And uh, it is 44.3 for owners Robert and Emma Brook. So they go into 27th as things stand at the moment. And just one more combination to come before the lunch break in this four-star long format here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials brought to you by the Jockey Club. And as always, uh, we'll mention a number of our sponsors throughout the weekend, but a big, big thank you to them for their continued support. The likes of uh, Paul Roger, who are back here with their tent uh, at uh, Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials a favourite of uh, Sir Winston Churchill, who was born here at Blenheim Palace, buried a short distance away. Uh, Boodles are back again in 2022 as well. They've got a showroom in the shopping village and uh, they're a brand with centuries of, of brilliant craft heritage, but at the same time, quintessentially British and the only remaining family-owned jeweller on London's Bond Street, which is a real feather in their cap. Uh, the likes of NFU Mutual, who have got, if you're here visiting Blenheim at all this weekend as well, they have a brilliant uh, family fun area in the Discovery Barn, which is all about helping the young and the old to immerse themselves in the world of farming. There are virtual headsets, which mean, wait for it, Ginny, you could find yourself virtually being licked by a cow. Wow. Um, what an experience. There you go. <laughs> uh, but there's all sorts. A height chart to see how tall you are compared to lots of different animals. The ever popular wooden dairy cow, Annabelle, as well. Uh, and they're also sponsoring the uh, fences in the main palace arena. Uh, there's a number of other very good sponsors uh, and partners on board this year. And we'll come to them as the weekend goes on. Here, though, is uh, Matthew Heath. And Matt comes forward with... Uh, Opposition Tiger, there's a 15-year-old by Fleetwater Opposition, owned by Caroline Rolls-Nicholson. Matt, who's a hugely experienced campaigner, and I believe was your partner in crime for Radio Burley a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely, he was, yes. Uh, we had great fun uh, commentating at Burley. Uh, Matt just uh, entering down the centre line there and smiling avidly at the <laughs> judges. <laughs> Trying to get those extra marks. <laughs> and this is a relatively new ride for Matt. was actually campaigned previously by Angus Pimblot. And so uh, a first four-star long run for the horse here. So Matt's just there, got the, got the rhythm back, got the focus back in that shoulder in a medium trot. Um, the horse just broke after his first medium And there he's got the balance, the rhythm. And then as he comes to get really straight, the extended across the long diagonal there. 
I'm not sure whether the horse actually previously just spooked at the flower. <laughs> um, when he he won't be it. thanking your mum for those no. beautiful flowers at the side <laughs> of the arena. He'll be hoeing words. <laughs> They're just keeping that crossing, making sure that the hind quarter doesn't trail in the half pass. And there, the horse just a bit of confusion. But then picks up nicely. Transition into the walk. Keeping the activity. And then straight into the extended walk. And there Matt just wants to make sure that the horse doesn't curl up at him and come back. He wants to take his nose down and out. <laughs> Tripped. <laughs> boldly there into the extended canter and then it's all about the transition coming back so not only the transition into the movement but also back you get marks for and there into his half pass then keeping that straightness and making that half circle back to the right Lovely change. If the judges are being picky, you might say a little bit croup high, but <laughs> I think it was a good change. <laughs> this is why I'm not a dressage judge. <laughs> I'm just grateful when they happen. <laughs> <laughs> there was a change. That's all we need. That's all we need. <laughs> My fellow dressage commentators from Burley will be cursing me right now. <laughs> little bit late behind there but but as you would say hey it happened hey it happened like, <laughs> don't hey, you worry Matt you changed leg <laughs> don't worry Matt <laughs> what a nice horse yeah and then corrected him in the hole nice um, what a nice horse and new partnership. Yeah, absolutely. Matthew Heath and opposition tiger for owner Caroline Rolls Nicholson takes us to the lunch break here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials. This is how the leaderboard shapes up. Sarah Bullimore Coraway still out in front, 27.8, but four star long first time as Lizzie Boff and Be Exclusive. A brilliant test from them. See them move into second, 29.6. Just point one ahead of Gemma Stevens and Flash Cooley. Uh, Georgie Gold who was very early down the centre line this morning for Loop holding fourth and New Zealand's Dan Jocelyn Cooley one to many in fifth on the leaderboard. Grace Taylor rounding out the top 10 with Game Changer 34.7. But we've still got lots to bring you throughout the afternoon. We've got some great names coming forward. Elizabeth Power for Ireland with Sense of Fine will be in the first session after the lunch break, as will Sam Lyle from Australia with BF Valor. Definitely a combination to keep a close eye on. Uh, Felicity Collins, RSH Contendor, will be in the last session of the day. And Dirk Schrader, the reserve national champion at the German National Championships with Casino 80. Another to keep an eye on. Ginny, a big thank you and uh, good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. And we will uh, be back after this short break. The first horse due down the centre line will be Rose Nesbitt, E.G. Michelangelo at 2.30. So join us a couple of minutes before 2.30 and we'll see you for a brief brilliant afternoon of dressage still to come.
Welcome back to the Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials and the four-star long format first phase, the dressage. And this is how things look at the moment. Sarah Bullimore, Coroway, the individual bronze medalist from the European Championships in Avanche last year, leading the way 27.8. Lizzie Boff on her five uh, four-star debut with Be Exclusive sitting in second, 29.6. Gemma Stevens and Flash Cooley, top 10 here in the eight and nine-year-old class 12 months ago. Coming forward in the long format this time, 29.7, the third of our sub-30 scores. Uh, Georgie Goss for Loop, they were one of the early ones down the centre line earlier on this morning. Dan Jocelyn and uh, Cooley one to many, one of two New Zealand riders inside the top 10. Uh, Roberto Scalisi for Italy, Alamine currently sitting in sixth. Uh, Kylie Roddy. Gubby Leach and uh, Grace Taylor completing the top 10 as things stand at the moment. A little bit further on down the leaderboards and Lucy Latter, RCA patron saint, 34.8. Tom Rowland, K&D Steel Pulse here have been pleased with 35.7. And uh, Amy Penny, PSH Encore, our pathfinder this morning. First of three rides for Amy. 36.3. So that is how the top 20 is shaping up at the moment. We've got eight combinations to come forward in this, the first of two sessions this afternoon. And I'm delighted to say, uh, welcoming to the commentary box with me this afternoon to take us through this next session, Caroline Harris. Good to have you with us. Hi, Nicole. It's nice to be here. It is very good to have you with. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this uh, four star long format dressage. And to get us up and running, it is the five-star combination that is Rose Nesbitt and E.G. Michelangelo. E.G. Michelangelo, a horse that uh, completed badminton this spring with Rose on board, have uh, been as low as 29.5 at Barbary in the four-star a little bit earlier on this year. So could well shake it up with the leaders here. And uh, looking forward to seeing them come forward for their first, hopeful completion since that badminton result earlier on in the year. So Rose Nesbitt now coming forwards with uh, E.G. Michelangelo, an 11-year-old she owns herself by Chalthago Z. He's been a really good horse for Rose, and she got a brilliant result at badminton with him. She's a lovely, tall, elegant rider, and she knows this horse so, so well. They've come up through the levels together. That was a nice entry, just a little bit crooked in the halt, but otherwise... He has a beautifully uphill way of going. Yeah, it's a lovely horse. It paints, paints a very, very attractive picture. That was really nice there in the shoulder and, and then turning across the medium trot. Showed good transitions. And this is a real chance to kind of show off the for a horse like this that has very good paces actually to show off those to the ground jury as well the extended trot right the way across the diagonal yeah it's a lovely lovely test if you're on a big mover when you're not on such a big mover you've got a lot of medium trot and a lot of extended trot i was gonna say i bet it feels a long way yeah. <laughs> And again, it's a test with a lot of walk. So actually, if you've got a horse that is good in the walk, you, yeah, can, you can make up a lot of marks. And especially if they do good walk pirouettes. Um, I'd say that was a little bit big, but otherwise the steps stay good. 
It's getting a little bit tight in his neck and dropping a little bit behind the vertical at times there. Yeah, he's just nodding. You can see him nodding on and off the bit a little bit. He'd like him to sort of just seek the rain forward just a bit more than he is. But looking beautifully relaxed and rideable. I've just been out actually and there's not a huge amount of people here yet but actually there's still quite an atmosphere up there there's a lot to look at. Yeah I rode in earlier in the eight nine year olds and you come in and it definitely does feel like there's quite an atmosphere there especially for these younger horses. He's really nice in the half pass, so he's got a good bend. First of the changes coming up. Just lost a little bit of impulsion slightly. Half circle. Yeah, it was clean. Just maybe would have said the neck twisted a little bit, but otherwise that was a good clean change. Again, he just, they're clean, he just twists a little, he doesn't stay completely dead straight. But How much the, obviously Sue Baxter at E will see that very clearly yeah. as she goes away from him. But, uh, oh, but oh, actually, just, just anticipated maybe bit. another change there at the end. But otherwise, that's been overall a really pretty solid test. Very nice. Very, very nice. And actually, while a couple of marks were lost in a few places, she looks very pleased and yeah. so she should. I don't actually think that's going to be two million miles away from the top of the leaderboard. I currently to remember is Coraway and Sarah Bullimore, 27.8. Uh, but I wonder if this could just be our fourth sub 30. Yeah, I was speaking to Sarah after her test, she was actually very disappointed with it. I can imagine, I can imagine, I can produce some really good marks. Yeah, she said he just dropped a little bit behind her, which, um, especially on the centre lines, kept wanting to come back to halt. But uh, Rose Nesbitt, E.G. Michelangelo, getting us back underway after that break. And uh, we'll bring you news on their score as soon as it comes through. Don't forget, eventingscores.co.uk. You can keep up to date with all of the scores as they become available. And actually 29.9 provisionally for Rose and she goes into fourth on the leaderboard. So well, I think she'll be very pleased with that. Um, pretty close to a personal best at the level. Now it is the second ride for Amy Penny. Amy, who we saw a little bit earlier on this morning, comes forward this time with PSH Catalyst. PSH Catalyst by Ulysses, owned by Gary Power. Ulysses, a horse, a stallion that stands at uh, Power Sport Horse Stud. And uh, Amy rides this 13-year-old mare. Uh, the horse's second run at four-star long level of competition. Did go to Blair Castle a few weeks ago, but actually didn't uh, go on to the jumping phases. Just did the dressage there. So uh, looking for their first full star completion. How many has Amy got in this? Three. Wow. It's not often we see a rider with three horses in a no, in a long busy, format. Yeah. I imagine there's a lot to think about when you've got three horses in there. Yeah, that would be a lot of work, especially at Blenheim, because everything is quite far away. So. Because that's three lots of arena familiarization, yeah. <laughs> three lots of horses being exercised or two lots outside of the one you're riding each day. Like it's a, a cumulatively yeah. quite a lot. So this horse is very different to the last one. The last one was very big moving, whereas this one isn't quite so exuberant.
what was the feeling like? Because obviously when you were doing your eight and nine-year-old test, there was the, the four-star long going on at the same time. Did the horses notice it? Did it distract them at all? Did the young horses get a bit of confidence from it? Yeah, I think it's nice for them because actually they come out there and they've got another horse in there with them. So I think it's nice for them being quite on their own because they used to have the eight and nine-year-olds right quite far away and I used to find these to get quite hot in that arena for some reason although there wasn't much atmosphere or anything I think they just very much felt completely on their own whereas last year was the first year they did it like this yes I they? think so um I think it works works really well so they're just a little bit quarters leading better at the end But it's such a wonderful backdrop. It's lovely, actually, that the eight and nine-year-olds get to go and be in front of the palace as well. It's great experience and education for them. Oh, amazing. And actually, we, it's brilliant that we see a lot of eight and nine-year-olds that have been in the eight and nine-year-old class coming then back coming to, that. to the long format. But like my little eight-year-old, they've never seen the big screen or anything like that before. So it's good for them to have to take in all these sorts of things. Amy looks like she's just doing a good job of keeping a lid on the tension. Yeah, the walk does look quite tight. And she's not riding with spurs on either. Which would be unusual, I guess, at this level. Yeah, you don't get many. It used to be a rule that you had to wear spurs, yeah, used didn't to, it? Yeah. And then the FEI actually removed it a couple of seasons or well, so I mean, ago. it was a stupid rule because I used to have one that was very hot and you could wear just... The, without an actual spur bit on it but as long as you're wearing something which seemed ridiculous and she's managed that walk very well because it does look like it wants to just But this would be more of your sort of thoroughbred blood type of horse, whereas the last one was more a lot more warm bloody, like very, very different types of horses. Again, you can see the tension in the fact that the quarters just come in leading and it's just just needed to get the shoulder a bit more in front. It's getting a bit hot before this change. It happened. It did it. They scored 46.5 last time out at Blair, okay. which makes me think that actually she does have the propensity to get a little, <laughs> little bit hot in this phase. Yeah, but Amy's doing a very good job of just she looks keeping like her. one that wants to just go and gallop and go cross country. But the difference between this horse as she just goes this oh, oh. unfortunately didn't come through, was late behind by a couple of strides. Uh, the difference between this horse and how rideable the one before, e.g. Yeah, Michelangelo was, is very, very different. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's getting very hot now. Well, I think she's done a brilliant job of managing that because it looked like she wanted to completely let rip. And I think she's pretty, Amy's pretty pleased with it as well. The mare did a super job in keeping a lid on the excitement levels. Uh, the other thing that I always find, um, you know, it, it can affect some horses more than others. But actually, on the outside of the dressage arena are a number of blooming great big cross-country fences. Yes, and they notice, yeah. don't they? Well, the, the ones that they know their jobs, well, at this level, they definitely know their jobs very well. Um, and you've also, you've done a massive long hack up here and hacked all the way past a heap of cross country fences so for them getting them then into the zone of actually just doing dressage can actually be a little bit tricky well amy penny and a psh catalyst the second ride for amy she'll be forward a little bit later on today uh, have finished their test and there is rose nesbitt eg michelangelo 29.9 her confirmed score delighted. I think she'll be really pleased with that. And that certainly sees her well in contention here as things stand at the moment. As next to come forwards, it is Kate Rowe. Kate rides at Habler, 10-year-old uh, that she owns herself by Love Deschamps. And uh, combination coming forward 
in their first four-star long. That's for both horse and rider. So Kate has actually just recently moved and based her horses at mine. Um, oh, perfect. We're going to get all the inside <laughs> info. <laughs> this horse is absolutely tiny. I don't know how big it says it is, but it is absolutely minute. But I think, I haven't really seen it go that much, but I think it's a real, real jumper. Um, but Kate is a full-time dentist, so... It's amazing, isn't it, being able to juggle a full-time career alongside your eventing at this level? Yeah. But no, it'll be interesting to see it. I haven't actually really watched it much, so it'll be interesting to see it go. They actually come here off the back of two clear rounds cross-country at both Barbary Castle and Hartbury. Went very well at Houghton Hall for a double jumping clear round in the three-star long format earlier on this year as well. So that's what where they uh, finished off their qualifications for uh, their first four-star long format. Just walking yeah, into the halt a little bit. a little bit too progressive there. So the actual test is enter at collected canter, halt, halt salute, yeah. proceed at collected trot. So um, tr the transition to halt is certainly part of that mark as I'd just like a bit more angle there. She hasn't really got any angle in the shoulder end. It's better in the shoulder end this way. Yeah, when you're on a little horse like this, it does feel like a very long way along the arena when you're trying to do extended trot. Again, he just needs, he looks a little bit unsupple, like that didn't really show any bend at all. How many tracks should you be on as you go across in the half bars? So... Really, you should, the head and shoulder should be a touch in front and then you want the quarters pretty much in line with the shoulder. But they should show good crossing and everything, which I would just say that lacked a little bit. That started really well and then just got a little bit big at the end, but otherwise it wasn't too bad at all. And that way it's far too big at the beginning. The horse looks pretty relaxed, so he doesn't look too fussed about it all. I always find when their ears just have that gentle flop, <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that the relaxation it's is real. A good yeah. Sign. Nice kind yeah. of transition. Just like to be a little bit bolder there and really go for it in the extended canter. Oh, just so it's a little bit safe. It almost feels like yeah. I'm lacking a little bit of impulsion. You just want to... A little just bit get of a, a squeeze. Bit more power and a bit more jump. 
Oh, I'll just light behind there in the tent. Yeah, and again, he just looks like he really struggles to bend this way. He struggled in the trot half pass and the canter. So, what would you? What would you? Oh, oh, and just unfortunately, the just dropping the impulsion back to trot there. Um, what would you do to improve the suppleness? I think his tongue's come out uh, as well. Um, oh, oh God! Oh, he says no. Not happy. Um, he it just looks like he just needs to really sort of just work on the bend and getting it a bit more through its body. It's all just a little bit safe and stuck because he looks like he could do a very sweet test it just and very relaxed which almost yeah. a little bit too relaxed too in relaxed, places which yeah. we were saying a little bit earlier actually some horses deal with the atmosphere in different ways and yeah. some switch off a little bit too yeah, much yeah some you can go in and they can actually completely drop behind you which is i actually find almost more difficult than one that's sharp and in front of you um when they do that. We're just looking for that score in for uh, Amy Penny and BSH Catalyst. 44.4, so goes into 31st as things stand at the moment. But it is uh, Sarah Brillamore Coraway who lead the way, 27.8. The ones to beat at the top of the leaderboard. As uh, so if you're just tuned in here, then a very, very warm welcome to you here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials. Caroline Harris sat alongside myself, Nicole Brown, as we head into the uh, first session after the lunch break and uh, the halfway mark of it. Elizabeth Power for Ireland. Izib, who rides at Senza Fine. This is a new ride for Izib this year and a horse that went brilliantly in the long format four star at Mill Street a little bit earlier on this season. Finished on the podium there. Who um, used to ride this one? I was with Tim and Chanel Price. Oh, yeah, of course. It's still in the same ownership, actually, um, of uh, Terry Miller, who okay. has been a huge supporter of eventing, of the prices and, and other riders over the years. And, in fact, is on the advisory board here at Blenheim. Oh, wow, well, okay. Um, so massively involved in the horse trials as well. And this a horse that they think a huge amount of. They actually sent her over to Izzy on the basis that actually she would be, you know, have the potential to maybe do some pure show jumping. Um, but Izib's worked really hard with her over last winter. There was sort of no pressure and they seem to have created a really good partnership. Um, Izib is one of those riders who's just been so consistent at the upper levels, but actually just had the odd bit of bad luck um, over the last few years. Soladoon, of course, is the horse that she is perhaps most well known for recently and has had some incredible finishes, including top 10 at Burley in 2019. Uh, but she had that wonderful partnership with um, September Bliss, I want I to say, that. Um, that would have been a, a few years ago now, going back to sort of her first step up to um, top level and uh, comes from a, a real horsey dynasty this Her horse family. has an amazing active hind leg and actually they completed um the hanbury sport horses Burgeon international a little bit earlier on this year as well i'm just going to double check that it was september bliss you made me doubt myself there <laughs> caroline i could have made a horse's name up uh, i don't think i did um she had Kel she did have Kilpatrick River. Yeah, I remember that one. There was a horse called September Bliss. <laughs> That's fine. I'm not going too mad. <laughs> And they did go on to complete the likes of Badminton and Burley. So you were so, yeah, I, I wasn't. I wasn't two miles away. And she's got a really impressive. It's really yeah. It just looks. It looks a hot horse. Um, but it's a big move. A little bit spooky around the edges. It was a, quite spooky when I was cantering around the edge. How do you ride a hot horse in the arena? Uh, I mean, they all vary so much. Um, 
some get hot because of the atmosphere, others get hot just because it's dressage. Um, yeah, it really, really varies. You normally just have to sit there and manage them as much as you can. Is it more leg? Is actually a good thing sometimes? Uh, sometimes yes, and on other horses, really, Absolutely really not. not. <laughs> Yeah, this one, it just it gets a little bit irregular, just where you can see the tension just slightly creeping in. That was very nice in the half hour, so it's showing really scopey steps. Zib doing a good job with her just setting up for that walk pirouette. You could see her just preparing for the transition when she crossed over the centre yeah, line. Was really nice. Like she kept it very small, tight. The horse kept even steps behind. Just maybe took one step. It got a little bit stuck at the end there, but started well. Oh, just a tiny bit of tension creeping in. She did a good job. It wasn't quite a jog. Just a little bit of a loss of rhythm. for that canter transition to come there's a lot of walk here and they do all know that this canter transition is coming so actually you pick up the reins at s it's a long way around to see to then keep them relaxed so is it power and sends a fine just see it getting a little bit tight and a little bit hollow there in the canter Doing a very, very good job of producing everything she can out of the way. You feel like Izib is riding a bit of a tightrope as to what she can ask for. Just gets the... It's clean. It just looked a little bit tight and it was a little bit not quite on her aids. There, it didn't start with much angle, but she did a good job rescuing it and getting it a lot more parallel. Much better. better change, yeah. It actually shows, it looks like it's going to, it could do a really beautiful test, like very expressive, the changes are expressive, just probably their new partnership is getting to know each other. And actually, there is still a lot to like from the test that she delivered. And she looks absolutely thrilled with it. Yeah, she looks very happy. And so she should. Is it power and sends a fine finish their test here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials brought to you by the Jockey Club. And they actually scored 29.0 last time out at Mill Street. That was when they went on to finish on the podium. And so they'd dearly love to be anywhere close to that today. They've been, uh, in their last three runs, 30 or better. So uh, watch this space here with that score because it could certainly be one that uh, goes into a, a very good position. So uh, here is how things stand at the moment. Sarah Bullimore, Caraway, 27.8, leading at the top of the table. Lizzie Boff on her four-star debut at long format with Be Exclusive, delighted with a 29.6. Gemma Stevens rounding out the top three. Flash Cooley will see Gemma tomorrow afternoon, actually, with Jalapeno. Uh, and that is a horse on whom she finished top 10 here 12 months ago. So uh, if you are just tuning in, 
then delighted to have you with us. This next combination is one that I personally am really looking forward to seeing, actually, because it's a combination we haven't really seen on British soil before. And so we'll come to them in just a second. Uh, Caroline Harris uh, sat alongside me. Caroline, uh, just uh, fill us in on your dressage test. You've got one here in the eight, nine-year-old class and you did your test this morning? Yeah, so I've literally just got a little eight-year-old. Um, uh, he was a really good boy. I was annoyed, very annoyed with myself for the last change because he did beautiful changes outside and he just got a bit tired and dropped behind me on the diagonal. Um, but otherwise, he's brilliant. He's no big flashy mover but he was very accurate and correct everywhere else so and he scored a 32.9 yeah so you're still in you're inside the top 10 well yeah, in touch no I'm, ha I'm I am very happy with him as I say he is no nothing like these big flashy ones in front of him um but I think when we can get that real good clear round test he'll be on a good mark and you were actually on the podium here 12 months ago in the eight and nine year old class yes yep so i had a lovely mayor miss pepperpot she came third last year um it's actually always touch wood treating me quite well <laughs> finding some wood the there's eight, some wood behind you there you go yeah the eight nine year old class has always treated me quite i remember doing my first ever four shot four star on billy bumble in the eight nine year olds and she was seventh i think um and then i had another seventh with a big horse called falco so yeah. And what about um, cross country? Have you been out and had a look at David Evans's track just yet? I actually haven't walked it yet. Um, I've got days to walk <laughs> it. So, um, no, I haven't had a look yet. How um, many times would you walk a four star short track? Uh, well, it depends. But you're here for so long that you will probably end up walking it three or four times, but I probably wouldn't do that normally. Um, I was up at Burge and I walked it twice maybe because I had time to walk it twice. So, yeah, normally about two times. And what does the, the plans for the rest of the season hold for you? Um, so I've got a few horses going to Osberton, um, a couple stepping out to advance at Little Downham, um, and then that's about it, really. So, yeah. And you had a, a new base this year. You've been based, or you were based with Sam Griffiths, yeah. um, former badminton winner, now New Zealand team coach, yeah. for many years. Ten years? Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. And you've set up on your own at the back end of last year. Yeah, so I moved to Aston Farm, which is amazing. The facilities there are fantastic. Um, it obviously takes a bit of time sort of settling into a new area and everything, um, but it's a lot easier getting to events. I spend a lot less time in the lorry. <laughs> Was it a bit of a, a shock in so much as you'd been based for, for such a long time? I always think moving house is stressful. Moving yards must be doubly so. Yeah, I mean, we timed it well that we moved beginning of December, so the horses would came in from their holiday to the new yard which made it a lot easier um and i mean the yard has got everything you could possibly wish for so we're very very lucky there um but yeah no i mean it definitely brings its challenges and i always find when you move it's just the whole routine and settling into how to, i've done it one way for 10 years so it's just finding that whole new way to do it um but no i i love it there it's great lots to look forward to how many horses have you got uh so we've got about 20 odd in obviously i've got a couple for kate Row who we just saw go round, and then a couple of star forces as well well it looks like i'm just trying to get an update for you so next due in should have been um sam lyle, sam lyle bf velour but haven't come forward as far as we can see so we'll bring you news on them as soon as we can uh, not showing as withdrawn on my list at the moment, um, but also haven't come forward to the dressage. So we do hope all is well there. But if you are just uh, tuning in to us here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials, then we have got uh, still some big names to bring you before the end of the day, because... Uh, in this section, we have got our next three riders, Germany, Great Britain and Ireland. Will Zoakden will be one of those. He comes forward with a class coolie. Uh, Wills, who is a, a top, top jockey, has had some very good placings that recently won an international up at Blair Castle and always one who is hugely competitive. And then in the final session of the day... It is uh, Felicity Collins, RSH Contendor, a young rider, team gold medalist. Uh, Dirk Schrader, Casino 80, a really interesting combination. Brilliant to see them here at Blenheim. And actually, uh, Germany last won this four-star long format back in 2016 when Bettina Hoy, Signor Medicot, took the top spot. And Dirk Schrader on this horse was reserve German national champions earlier on this year. And I think 
many would have tipped them as ones that, that could well have been in Protoni for the German team. Uh, so Dirk will be one to look out for this afternoon. Kimi Sasser and Landmark's Monaco uh, certainly one to keep an eye out for the USA. And the last to go today at 20 past four, Harry March Shanbeg Cooley, a horse that Harry thinks an enormous amount of for the future. Uh, ground jury here in the four start, led by President uh, Bobby Stevenson. At uh, E is uh, Sue Baxter for Great Britain. And at uh, M, it is uh, Douglas Hibbert for Great Britain. As uh, next to come forwards, we welcome, I think this is Marlin Hansop Hotop. I think so. Not Sam Lyle. I wonder maybe the horse might pull the shoe or something. Could well know. have done. We will keep our eyes peeled for news and bring it for you as soon as we can. But uh, now we welcome uh, Marlin forward. And uh, Marlin brings Carlitos uh, Quidditch. Carlitos Quidditch K, who went uh, very well to finish just outside the top 10, actually, at a very, very competitive Harao de Pain in the Nations Cup. And scored 26.9 on the first phase on that occasion. So absolutely ones uh, to keep an eye on here. The leader, remember, 27.8, and that is Sarah Bullimore and Coraway. It's a very striking grey. I always find a grey very attractive. And this is a horse at uh, 10 years of age, by uh, owned by uh, Bodil uh, Ibsen. Has actually started at four-star long level of competition previously. We're actually top 20 at Bukalo at the end of last year. So have some good experience as well. And you can exactly see why he's a horse that can pick up the good marks in the first phase. Yeah, he really catches the eye. He's a big, scopey horse in the way it moves. And whereas we've seen a couple of horses that haven't had a huge amount of engine behind this him. This looks like it's really she, powering along. She almost yeah. is sort of having to contain the engine mm. somewhat. Which is just a lot, it really catches the eye. It's a lot more attractive to watch a horse like this than one that's you feel like slightly creeping along and you just want to give it a kick and say, come on. Nice positioning in that half pass. Yeah, it's a lovely changeover as well. This absolutely looks at the moment like it would be challenging our leaders, but still a long way to go. And actually, Marlin used every ounce because you can do the walk pirouette between markers there, can't you? So between yeah, and you, G and M. You want to walk like she's done. She's gone further because it gives you, it gives more time, especially here where you then got to make a transition over the center line to extended. So she's shown a clear transition from her collective walk to extended. Good over track. And this horse just, just you can just knows see, just knows coming. it's coming. It's so difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Like you say, actually, from S through to C, there is it's actually quite a long way. It's a very long way. And they do all know this is coming. And then you'll literally, they know they're then turning and going into extended canter. So it's all just a lot of anticipation. It's a nice transition back from the standard canter. But 
That was a lovely change. Really relaxed, beautiful. to say everything about this test so far makes me think that this could well be our new leader nice change yeah I mean that was just there wasn't a lot lot not to like really about that and the horse beautifully active plenty of engine but very very relaxed as well so uh, marlin uh, hansen hot up uh, finishes her test with carlitos uh, quidoch k and we could well be about to see a new leader here at blenheim palace international horse trials in the four star long format we'll update you with their score as soon as it does come through the one to beat remember is 27.8 sarah bullimore who uh, sits at the top of proceedings ahead of Lizzie Boff and B exclusive Gemma Stevens rounding out the top three. Just four sub-30 scores at the moment. Is it power and sends a fine for Terry Miller have gone into sick 32.0. And I think they'll be pretty pleased with that as a score because uh, certainly keeps them well in touch here. And uh, provisionally looking like Marlin hansen Hotop has gone to the top of the leaderboard 24.6. And actually, an absolutely enormous percentage mark from Sue Baxter at E of over 80%. Uh, so 24.6 is the score to beat. But a new leader here and uh, certainly one that absolutely deserves to be at the top of the uh, standings as things go at the moment. The last German winner of this four-star long format was Bettina Hoy and Signor Medicott, wow. who went on to win in 2016. So... A new leader and a new score to beat. Next to come forward, it is Will Zoakden with uh, Bridget Masden and Frances Hay-Smith's A Class Cooley, 10-year-old by Heritage uh, Fortunus. Horse's first run at the four-star long level has that uh, Cooley prefix, which, of course, uh, references the horse having come from Cooley Farm. Richard and Georgina Sheen set up in Wicklow in Ireland. And Will's has a really close partnership with uh, the Sheens, actually rides a lot of Cooley horses. Yeah, they found a lot of very good horses. Good to tune. And it would be a career personal best it, uh, with the horse for Carlitos Quidditch K and Marlin Hansen Hotop, our new leader as well. So brilliant performance from her. And this horse for Wills is one that I know he thinks a huge amount of. I think this was the horse actually he rode on the Nations Cup team in Harada Pan a few weeks ago actually finished uh, inside the top 30 there, but on a score of 37.8, just a couple of seconds over the time cross country. So it's still a very, very good score. And actually scored a 25.5 at Barbary Castle wow. last time, the, or the time before her out of pass. So absolutely capable of scoring very low in this phase. This looks more like one you'd have to get a really accurate score um, test on. The last one's very big and attractive moving, whereas these ones probably a little bit like the one I'm riding. You have to really go for the clear round test to how, get every mark you can get. How difficult is it to follow a good test? Are you aware of how good the test before you has been? Uh, no, but you will have seen them in the warm up and know that you're <laughs> following a good one. Uh, my little horse, I try to imagine that I'm sitting on Vallegro when you go in there. <laughs> visualisation, <Yeah>. visualisation. <laughs> But if you can get, I mean, um, Vinay Kamir, she's not a big mover. If you can get that really soft and just really smooth and show very good, accurate tests, and they've got to mark you, so. And Wills actually comes here having completed his first Burley a few weeks ago as well. Has a really busy team of horses. Sarah Murray, his head girl, and 
the team at home do an amazing job in, in keeping everything going. Kept moving around the pirouettes. Wills is a really competitive rider, actually. So he's based up in Scotland in Perth, and he... Uh, would quite often fly a little bit under the radar when he comes right down south, or less under the radar now than he used to, I think. But he's, he's always brilliant. been... He's, he's a very brilliant jockey. Quite very competitive. Very good cross-country rider. Fast yeah. as well. This horse has actually stayed nice and relaxed in the walkers. All the others have looked like they're anticipating this transition. He's not. Yeah, nice transition up. Just oh, and then very late behind hollowed, and then went late behind. He looked coming into that flying change. He, Wills was just sitting very quietly, and I thought it might just come up quite sweetly for him. Yeah, but I thought he was going to pop into some very sweet change because the rest of it's been very sweet. Just a little bit in the half passes. His canter, his quarters are just trailing a tiny bit. better that, that time clean, just a little bit hollowed and almost felt like it came a stride or so after wills yeah. asked for it yeah but i don't know is this a young horse or 10 year old okay well, first run at the level still green enough there. and i think only stepped up to four star level i mean literally has done three four star shorts okay so it's very green to it all very green uh, missed the 2020 season right uh, potentially through injury potentially just for the fact so that it was like coronavirus but um, really anyway. Yeah, only was at two star level in 2019, did a couple of three stars in 2021 yeah. and stepped up this year. Yeah. So a lot to look forward to for the future, but a class coolie and uh, Wills Oakden complete their test here in the main Palace Arena at Blanham Palace International Horse Trials. And uh, we'll bring you a score for them as soon as it comes through. But the one to beat is Marlin Hansen Hot Up, Carlotte. Carlitos at Quidditch K for Ona Boda Lipson at 24.6. That is confirmed for them. And that is the score that is out in front. And it will take some beating as well. We've still got some top class combinations to come over the next couple of days. And of course, we will be back with full dressage coverage tomorrow. If you want to watch the eight and nine year old class, then the dressage is being streamed simultaneously at Ben King and Tina Cook are taking you through the eight and nine-year-old class, at which at the moment out in front is Selena Milnes and Cooley Snapchat for Mr. and Mrs. Rucker ahead of Tom Jackson, Newton Belize. Uh, 28.4, Selena M Milnes leads on. But uh, we'll turn our attentions uh, to the next combination to come forward here, and it will be uh, the last to go before the break. Stephanie Stamshire and uh, Master Swatch for Ireland. And this is a horse 13 years of age by Watermill Swatch, owned by uh, Paula Stamshire, and a combination coming forward in their debut at four star long level, both horse and rider. And Stephanie, who uh, has uh, had some good solid results, top 20 finishes in the uh, four star over on Irish soil this summer. Mallow, I believe, is Kilgilkey. I think I'm so. I'm double. I was doubting no, myself I, for no, a no, second. No, I think you are right. But I'm pretty certain that is right. There were top 20 there, top 20 at Mill Street in the four-star short as well as their final preparation for here. So Steph Stamshire and uh, Master Swatch next to come forwards.
and actually making a nice start to her test. Quite a lot of angle on that shoulder. And I'm right in thinking they can actually be on three tracks or three. four. Oh, is it? Three According to Carl Hester, I oh, mean, okay. I just, I well, just took what him. he said, yeah. but I'd, I'd believe him. I'll be, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna question. No, I, I would definitely. But go maybe with we what see, he maybe we see the four more in pure dressage, yeah. and we see it less so. <laughs> doing a very sweet job with it it's no again not a very big mover but she's getting the best that she can out of the mare and this has been the horse that actually she took up to uh, the oh, just junior. a little bit stuck there down into the walk you'd like that a bit of a smoother transition she did two junior young rider uh, one junior young rider European Championship and one young rider European Championship with this horse. Horses like that are always lovely that take you up th all the way through the levels. And a huge partnership as well. They'll know each other so, so well. Yeah. Just, oh, she did well to keep moving she behind. Did keep it. I thought it was going to get stuck, but she kept on going. And again, one of those few horses that actually, the risk of speaking too soon, has taken that transition very well. We've seen yeah. that tension and anticipation so much in that corner. Yeah, let's stay very relaxed. Coming up to the first of the two flying changes in this four-star A test. Gets it. Not quite straight, perhaps. Not straight, but clean. So far, I mean, she's not really done a whole lot wrong. There's been a lot to like from this test. They perhaps won't be getting the big, big marks, but it's always worth remembering. A seven from every judge for every yeah, movement a is good, a 30. Yeah, can get you a nice score, which no. actually would be quite competitive. Here. Very competitive here, to be fair. Oh, oh that I'm one was a bit tight and then late behind. Watermill Swatch gets a nice big pat for his efforts from Stephanie Stamshire as they come to the end of their test and it takes us to the end of the session as well. And what a session it has been because we have certainly seen some movement at the very top of the leaderboard. Stephanie Stamshire will bring you her score as it comes through. Uh, Will Oakden has gone into eighth with a class coolie, but we have a new leader, Marlin Hanson Hotop and Carlitos Quidditch K lead the way 24.6. And uh, they sit out in front of Sarah Bullimore Coraway at 27.8. Lizzie Boff, be exclusive on Lizzie's uh, debut at the four star long level. 
completing the podium as things stand at the moment. Rose Nesbitt, E.G. Michelangelo, the combination that got us underway after the lunch break, 29.9. Uh, they have gone into fifth, and Izib Power has also slotted into the top 10 with Senza Fine. So certainly plenty of movement inside the top 10 in this session of dressage. Big thank you, Caroline Harris, for no being thank you for having me. alongside me. Best of luck for the rest of the weekend. Thank you. And we will be back with the final session of dressage after a very short break. Felicity Collins due in the arena at quarter two for RSH Contendor. And uh, certainly some good names to come forward this afternoon. Will Marlin Hansen Hot Top be able to hold on to the top spot uh, at the end of the first day of dressage? Do join us shortly. We'll be back after this short break.
Well, welcome back to Blenheim Palace International Hall Strauss and the final session on the first day of dressage here in the long format to full start. And to get us underway, we have got a young rider team gold medalist in Felicity Collins and RSH Contendor. And uh, Felicity rides her longtime campaigner for co-owner Avrina Milton, who's been a big supporter of Felicity's over the years. And uh, this horse uh, also owned by uh, Felicity's mum, Vicky, by Nintendo. And actually has had uh, some good, solid results at not only four-star level, but five-star level as well. Rerouting here, having had an early problem at the Land Rover Burley Horse Trials a few weeks ago. So regrouping and uh, certainly would hope to be competitive this weekend. Sapped alongside me once again, uh, Tina Cook. Uh, Tina, it is good to have you back with us. And we're looking forward to seeing if anybody can challenge the lead set by uh, Marlin Hansen Hotop and uh, Carlitos Quidditch K. Well, I'm very pleased you said that horse's name because I don't think I would <laughs> manage that. 24.6, that is the score to beat. Okay. Well... This combination could be one of those. They've got the experience, obviously been, did a test just the other day at Burley. So they're used to riding in this sort of atmosphere. It wasn't the best of halts actually when he came down the center line nice and straight, but just lost a little bit of balance. But that was a very nice medium, kept a nice outline, kept balance all the way across. Felicity, Super young rider, really coming through the ranks, very elegant. And it's it's all about the picture and, and the partnership. And these two look a great partnership together. And that's the difference when you can see a horse keep its outline, make a turn and just show that lift and lightness across the ground. We see some of the young horses in the arena next door, the eight and nine-year-olds getting a little bit overwhelmed by the atmosphere. And they notice everything. They notice people coming in and out of the, the, the tray stands outside the sponsor's tent, doors opening, and it can upset them. Whereas a horse of this knowledge and experience, he just gets on with it and you want him to be listening to what Felicity is asking of him which he is. And he's got a brightness look about him. He's got his ears pricked. And that's a nice look when you're watching a test that you think that the horse is actually enjoying what it's doing. Is it just me or is his top lip get very long? Yes, I was, I was looking actually thinking well, he's a little bit parrot mouth, but um, he drops his lip down, I think, um, but slightly plays with his lips, which is a little bit frustrating because you want him to keep his mouth still. Um, so he's a bit of a player with his lips. But if he keeps his head very still, the judges shouldn't mark him down from that. And they were nice pirouettes, just kept moving, kept the flow. And then allowing the horse to lengthen his frame. Not necessarily free walk on long rein, but you want him to take his nose out and take longer strides. She's nearly letting go of the reins, not quite. And the horse being obedient enough that when you do shorten the reins, they, they don't suddenly think, yippee, we're off. And keeping their head still. And as simple as it may seem to do a walk to canter strike off, gosh, it's so easy to do it, make a mistake. And you do those a thousand times a day. But when you need to do it really well, and you've, as, as a rider, and you haven't told the horse exactly what you want it to do, but she did. That was good. And she moved and really lengthened away. And again, on a horse that's a five star horse, you can really go and show a difference. That's where Felicity needs to say, look, I'm above everybody else. I want to be at the top of the leaderboard. So I'm going to show you the real difference, the real gate changes there. He just rather jumped into his change, just came up above, a little bit of tension in the flying change. It'll get a nice mark, but it won't be a top mark because you felt that she actually had to really 
ride it. And it was a, a touch early if you want to be very critical. But that's a nice canter half pass. He kept the bend through his body. Sometimes when the horses get a little bit tense, they get a little bit rigid and, and find it very difficult to bend. That was good. It's almost nearly changed behind before in front, but I would have said that that was a clean change. And then you come down the centre line. So they would have done four changes when they were practising, and that was a lovely square halt, and he stood still. So, you know, you hope that, that she will be... Oh, she's just double-checking. Um, it was a very accurate test. I haven't watched because I've been flittering between the eight and nine-year-olds in this class, um, I would say that it would be up in the sort of top five or six. Yeah, to be honest, I would be a half expecting this to go sub-30. Um, and if she can make it sub-30, then she would go inside the top six. Um, it certainly was pretty much a clear round. In, yeah. uh, and, and there was some really nice work in there. Uh, it's a little bit interesting. This is a combination that actually have been top 15 in the eight and nine-year-old class. A good few years ago here were actually just outside the top 25, I think, when they came for the, the four-star long format. This is how things stand at the moment. Carlitos Quidditch K and Marlin Hansen Hot Top, actually her best ever international test of any level with the horse. 24.6 is the one to beat. Coraway, Sarah Bullimore. Would have been a little bit disappointed, I think, with 27.8. Capable of so much more in the first phase. But uh, Lizzie Boff being exclusive, her uh, four-star long debut, 29.6, sees her in third. We had some real movement in the top 10 in our last session of dressage. And I'll be very interested, actually. 29.5 Felicity's score has come through provisionally. And that is pretty damn close to a career personal best with the RSH contendor, which, considering... That international career is at 36 uh, competitions. I think she'll be pretty pleased with. And actually, it's only point one behind her personal best. So very, very good. And a personal best at the level. There you see she goes into third. And this is a really interesting one because he's a very, very good jumper. And I think she would feel very competitive here. And so she should do. You know, she's she's competed with him at badminton and... She went to Burley. OK, it didn't go as she as she wanted it to with an early run out. And I can understand now why people do pull up um, if you have an early mistake at a five star. When you've got Blenheim a few weeks later, when the stakes are high, it's great to be able to compete, compete here and also to get a, a good competitive result here. And actually, she will hopefully have the whole super, super fit for having been ready for Burley and, and 12 minutes nearly of cross country. So, look, watch this space. Felicity Collins into a podium position. But here is the reserve na German national champion. It is Dirk Schrader. A very nice hold. That'll get the judges' attention. Uh, and Dirk comes forward with Casino 80, owned by uh, Freya Reitmeier uh, by Casillas. And uh, a combination that actually went very well for a top 10 finish in the super competitive Harada Pan Nations Cup as well. So uh, have some very, very good performances on their record. Went to the European Championships in Avanche last year. Had 20 penalties cross country there. But I think there were plenty of people that thought Dirk might be on the German team or the German squad for Bretoni. And so uh, feels like actually coming here with uh, a little bit of a point to prove and would dearly love to make his presence felt and already you can just see the quality in this horse's work that sees them not having scored over 30 going back to those uh, Europeans last year Turk who is a great character a great sportsman he has been in the sport for a very long time and I know him well he's a competitor but also he sells a lot of horses. He runs runs a business. He's he's good fun, but equally he's a he's a strong competitor. And this is a very attractive horse. It really sits up. You ca catches your eye. It's very uphill. He's allowing Dirk to ride him. I would have thought he would be marking marking well. That trot work was super rhythmical, and they really look the part and yes he would be disappointed not to be 
at the Worlds, which is why he's made the effort to come over here. He spent a lot of time in the UK competing in years gone by. It's harder now to travel into Europe and for the Europeans to come over here. But he would only have come over here if he felt he can be super competitive on this horse. And those pirouettes were very good. He kept moving. The horse kept stepping through. And it helps in those pirouettes if you've got a horse that's active through its hocks, that when you're making the turn, that he's bending its hocks and it's stepping through and underneath him and supple, supple through his middle. And as you can see, Dirk really asking the horse to stretch out in its stride, lengthening his walk stride. The horse looks very relaxed the way he's doing it. Dirk showing all his experience. Oh, just flipped his head up a little bit there, but the judge might behind him might not have seen that. Well, you always hope not when you're in the middle of a test. Quietly shortening his reins, but this is a very attractive horse. You know, he, he looks super fit and he would have probably have prepared him with the worlds in mind. So fitness to have gone down to Italy and to have galloped around that course, you needed to have I've ridden around Patoni before and the horses need to be very fit there and this horse looks fit to do himself justice here at Blenheim. Dirt really rode into that corner so he could get plenty of bend and suppleness in the horse so he just floated across in that canter half pass. It looked effortless and that's what it's meant to look like and a lovely easy change. I think this could be getting very close if it continues the way it is. This is as absolutely as good as we have seen. Really lovely collected canter round the corner. The horse keeping a very uphill balanced outline. Very nice contact to the rein, to the horse's mouth. And amazingly... This is Dirk's fierce first visit to Blenheim, I think. Oh, my in goodness. In his entire career. And he, I mean, he has been at the top level of the sport going all the way back to early 2000s, maybe a bit before then. I do find that totally amazing, but I am not going to overrule well, you on it, statistics. No, no, no. Um, put, it, put it this way. On Echo Rating's numbers going back to 2008, he hadn't been here. And I was like, well, maybe he came before. But according to the FEI database, he hasn't. So it could well be a first ve Blenheim visit. We could well be about to have a German 1-2 at the top of the leaderboard because Dirk Schrader, Casino 80, one of uh, those combinations that were uh, flagged as ones to watch uh, coming into the competition have uh, certainly put in a very good performance in this phase. Yeah, that the, the, the only mistake I would almost say was coming down to the centre line to halt at the end. Uh, the horse was very crooked. He had his quarters to the right and he did a very crooked halt. But up until then, the rest of the test, he got his changes. I thought it was an, a very consistent, a real pleasure to watch. And And I would have thought, unfortunately, we don't have the the breakdown of the test in front of us, um, I would have thought it would have been one of the better ones, best ones that, that I've certainly seen in this class. I would say that the one that's leading, which is Marlin Hansen Hot Top, it was such a big mover, so expressive. Um, and, and they were very, very good to get a 24.6. I mean, the first two scores have come in for Dirk Schrader and at 72.08, 72.71. So would need that third judge's mark to be significantly higher to be able to challenge the leaders. But this is absolutely going to be a test that I think will go inside the top three. And uh, Dirk Schrader will absolutely be one to watch this weekend. Unbelievably experienced, has been and had a good lot of success here on British soil in the past as well. Had that wonderful partnership with King Artis, uh, on whom he was part of the German team that I think took... Um, gold at the London Olympic Games in 2012 and uh, has just been such a stalwart over the years for Team Germany, has been to some uh, five European championships, done a World Cup final, three World Equestrian Games, uh, had a few medals along the way as well. So uh, we're watching that leaderboard with interest because we could be about to see uh, them feature 
inside the top of the podium. But next to come forward, it is Kimi Sasser. And Kimi rides Landmarks Monaco, owned by Jacqueline Mars, 15-year-old by Formula One. And actually, a busy weekend for Ms. Mars because actually uh, Vermiculous and Lauren Nicholson have been out in Protoni and done a very good test for the US team this afternoon. And so uh, Kimmy will be looking at to uh, follow in those footsteps here this afternoon. Landmarks Monaco is... Uh, a combination that have had uh, some good results at four-star long level uh, previously. They've completed at four-star long level. First visit to, to Blenheim for both Kimi and for Landmarks Monaco. And they come here off the back of uh, a good clear round cross-country at Herrera Pan in the Nations Cup. They went to Bramham as well. So they've been based over here in the UK for a few months this summer, building their experience. And uh, we look forward to seeing them here at Blenheim this weekend. I just like the way that the horse just cantered around the arena even before she came down the centre line and was, was very still in his head and very confident. He is 15 years old, so he's got plenty of experience and mileage. And Kimmy's only 29, so still lots for her to, to learn. But they've, they've got a, you can see straight away that they've got a, a super partnership together. He keeps, he's not a big horse, he's not the biggest movers. But if he can just keep a nice, consistent contact and he would know all the movements, that is not going to be an issue. Just keep everything consistent. Like the medium trot there, nearly, she nearly went to ask for a little bit more, but then had a little skip. So that would mark her down for consistency there. So now just keep, don't let him drop his head down too much. He's just wanting to, to lean down and therefore losing his balance, which then disrupts the rhythm uh, across the diagonal. But to have an owner like Jacqueline Miles supporting you is just wonderful and and so much respect for people like her she's come into the sport and really kept the sport afloat through these difficult times and actually she you know has been a driving force behind us eventing as well you know through horsepower investment supportive top level events i know marilyn five star just recently announced that announced that mars equestrian are going to be one of their title sponsors um they're very involved as the presenting sponsor of Land Rover Kentucky three-day event as and well. And badminton. And badminton, of course. Um, and it just makes such a difference. Andrew Hoy also was is out at the World Championships riding. I can't think of the horse's Vasily name. Vasily de Lassos. That's it, isn't that? Yes. Not one of Jacqueline Mars's. Oh, okay. um, but I'm sure he is an ambassador, possibly, for Mars I think, Mars yes, yes, I do believe there is a connection there. Somehow, but from Jacqueline Mars's point of view, she'll be having her eyes fixed <laughs> on this performance now. And it did a good pirouette there, got a little bit stuck, but the second pirouette was a lot better. And allowing all this walk, just he doesn't mind stretching down this horse. He's happier being a little bit more downhill. So that's fine in the walk. You allow him to walk. Ah, uh, so that, many have just anticipated there and that is very expensive um in that walk movement when a horse just does that and you sort of think oh that wasn't really necessary and it's interesting because he looked very relaxed and it was almost just that moment of anticipation as opposed to tension yes exactly and you think with this horse is experience now he just needs to do a clear round. And there's just been the odd little, little tiny mistakes that have just caught him out. He actually looks, looks a super horse to, to ride. Actually, he, he's, he's quite, and I don't mean to be rude to him, slightly ponified. That actually, I bet he's, he's super fun to ride to a Absolutely. fence. Absolutely, and he just did a lovely flying change. 
and and he's he hasn't got a big canter that you need to balance. So I could see the way that the canter came round the corner that he was going to to do a lovely change, and you hope that he is re rewarded for that. For the thing, and that's the one thing about dressage judging: some horses that don't have the biggest of movements that reward them for what they do well. And this horse did a particularly good first flying change just a little bit bum high in in the second change but really there wasn't too too much wrong with it whoops lost his balance there as he just came into the last halt and wasn't square behind so he would be marked down there it was a nice test i would say um you know she's not going to be threatening the leaders um but but she looks looks smiling as if she's happy. Yeah, absolutely. And I have to admit, I'm a big fan of Landmark's Monaco. And uh, Kimmy Sasir completes her test to here at Blenheim in the four-star long format. A score in for Dirk Schrader and Casino 80 at 29.0. So they go into third behind uh, Coraway, Sarah Bullimore in second, Marlon Hansen, Hotop and Carlitos Quidditch K lead the way still 24.6. I'm a little bit surprised that he wasn't closer to Marlin's score, but uh, not nearly as big a mover and as flashy as the, the f horse that leads the way after the first phase as things stand at the moment. Um, the uh, this uh, final session we've seen a couple of combinations go inside that top five so this top 10 all change felicity collins uh, rsh contendor at 29.5 a personal best at the level for felicity and rsh contendor certainly uh, see them well in contention so three combinations uh, to come forwards as we head towards the end of the first day of dressage here at blenheim palace international horse trials and uh, we've got uh, Emily Philp, Cupido, the third. Uh, Jamie Kellock and uh, Summer Bay and Harry Mutt, Shambeg Cooley will complete the day. But Tina Cook sat alongside me. Uh, Tina, a brilliant first day of dressage uh, so far here today. And uh, I think it. I think I speak for everybody when I say it's just so good to be back at Blenheim. Oh, it's always good to be back here. Um, such a beautiful venue. Uh, to be in front of the palace is just a privilege in itself. And even when you've been here several times before, you still cannot fail to appreciate the the, the, the house, the palace. I say house, the oh. palace in front <laughs> of you. And it is quite beautiful. And to be able to ride your horse near enough in the garden, doing a dressage test um, is a real privilege. And, and the crowds will really come out at the weekend. Um, they've been a little bit slow coming in today, but there is so much excitement, so much for everyone to watch uh, with the cross country. And to have these two competitions as well, there's plenty of action on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. The show jumping for the eight and nine-year-old class taking place Saturday morning. Then we move our attentions on to the uh, cross country for the long format class and then vice versa on Sunday, the eight and nine year olds do their cross country in the morning and the show jumping takes place in the main arena in the afternoon or throughout the morning into the afternoon. Uh, it should be said as well, I think obviously a very, very difficult week after the uh, very sad passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and every day the event are honouring uh, her reign with a two minute silence which will be held each day at 12 o'clock we had one today we will have one for the next three days and then the national anthem is sung by laura wright there's a number of riders also wearing uh, black armbands in memory of uh, her majesty the queen and all of the flags here are being flown at half mast as well so uh, three combinations uh, left to come forwards as uh, the top of the leaderboard, remember, Marlin Hansen Hotop, 24.6. Last German to win here was uh, actually in 2016. Uh, and it was Bettina Hoy, Senior Medicot, Senior Medicot, in fact, who actually has delivered the best test with an Indian rider at a World Championships, any World Championships, out in Protoni this weekend already. Uh, so that is going on. That was actually a 30.1. As uh, now coming forwards, it is Emily Philp. Emily Rides at Cupido the third, and this horse that is uh, owned by Emily herself by Quasimodo Z, a 15 year old Emily who has ridden up to the five star level, has produced uh, a number of good horses as well. Actually, was instrumental in the production of Falula um, 
who is out in uh, Protoni with Ireland's Porrig McCarthy as part of the Irish team. Uh, but Cupido, the horse that, that Emily brings forward here, and actually a combination that have had a bit of a break from international competition since uh, the, over the last couple of years. They uh, ran at Burnham Market in the four-star long format, completed there with a clear cross-country and also completed Blenheim in 2018 and Burnham Market was 2020. So haven't uh, seen them much internationally since then and uh, did the dressage at Burgeon, scored a 29.3 but didn't actually compete in the jumping phases. So a combination that we haven't seen a massive amount of internationally but Emily hugely experienced. The fact that this horse is, has been here in 2018 um, shows that maybe he's a little bit fragile, keeping him fit and sound and, as well. And there's a real down to a rider's skill and planning. Uh, there's so much goes into getting the horses competing here anyway, but letting alone bringing them back as a 15-year-old. So she's... With the summer as being as it is, being dry and the firm ground, sometimes the firm ground suits some horses and some not. But the fact that this horse has had a little a interrupted preparation or record over the last few years, maybe she has to be very careful where she runs him. He's a very good looking horse. He's got a very easy way of going. Emily has had plenty of horses that she's produced to this level. But the fact that she hasn't taken this horse on up to up to five star, it, the, the, there may be a reason reason behind it. But to bring him here to Blenheim, if he finishes here well, then maybe she could look for future events with him. She's she's competitive. She can do a very, very good job on the jumping day. And this is a nice quality looking horse. He looks like he moves well she's just asking him to do his pirouette and actually she just went a little bit further than she needed to but you can do your pirouette at any point after the center line just getting his attention before asking him to do the pirouette little bit of a big big circle but at least he kept moving forward and it's just deciding how much how tight you do your turn, how much the horse is... As soon as you put your leg on, if you feel them listening, then you can do a tighter turn. You go, right, I'm going to try and show off and get a really good mark. But if they're not listening, you have to go, I've got to keep moving. And you have to make that decision when you're riding the horse on this occasion, how much do I risk? How much do I go for each movement without ruining it and, and therefore losing a lot of marks? And it's, yes, everyone is competitive to do the best that they can, but it's it's making a, a true judgment on how your horse is feeling. And this horse is doing a nice test so far. He's got quite a big bounding canter. So she could really show off. And the judge, is, judge that's sitting at E along the side can really judge that movement because they can see the length of the horse's frame and the length of the horse's stride and the rider collecting back and keeping the horse really sitting on its hocks and keeping it coiled up like a spring before coming round to do the canter that suppleness and this horse is really listening he did a the change there was a little bit early but she felt that she was going to ask for it early rather than waiting for another stride which is a good call. He finds it easier going to the left. You can see he really bent round through his rib cage. And horses are no different from humans. We can turn round better one way than the other, and horses quite often are the same. And that was a very nice change. He really listened to her. He had a very relaxed canter, very relaxed way of going, and it was a very nice change. And again, you hope the judges really mark him up for that. For a horse that's been away from the... Oh, he just did a change. That was a shame that he threw that away as he came round the corner. 
he changed from one lead to another. So rather threw away that mark before going into the halt. But a lot of that test actually... I would said was was very nice. It was it was pleasing to watch, and he had a very loose way of going. And you can actually see the look of slight despair on Emily's face as she came into that halt because she, on the whole, I think was very pleased, but just that slight frustration that it couldn't have just kept together for a moment or two longer. As uh, we go now to uh, Canada in uh, just a moment. As a reminder that the one to beat 24.6, Marlin Hansen Hottop and Carlitos Quidditch K at the top of the leaderboard here in the four-star long format. And uh, next uh, to come forward will be uh, Jamie Kellock. Jamie, who rides uh, Summer Bay for Canada. And this is a horse that actually is owned by Jamie herself. 13 years of age. And a combination that have some good form over on U.S. soil. We're top 10 at Bromont in the four-star long format in June. And actually runners up at Tryon in the uh, four-star short a little bit earlier on in May. So they've got some really good form. They've actually completed a couple of four-star long formats, having made the step up from three-star. And I think it'll be their first uh, run on British soil. So we wish them the very best of luck. As uh, they come forward to uh, present to our ground jury of Bobby Stevenson from the United States at C, at Sue Baxter at E, and Douglas Hibbert at M. She's still, Jamie is still a young, youngish rider. She's only 27 and to have the experience and the support to be able to come overseas to ride abroad is such a massive deal and so exciting to gain the experience of coming over here and 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 to have the support of being able to do that is everything even just from the horses the management of horses uh, to the actual competitions themselves oh, completely and you just will learn so much about how you prepare your horse have you done enough am I going to be competitive when I get over to wherever I'm going and there's also so much luck involved you hope your horse travels well and and your support crew that comes over over with you and you know it it's it's so exciting to have that opportunity and this and this looks like a lovely horse she feels that she justifies being able to be sent over over to the UK. And that's what I'm, the riders always say. That's what they dream of, to be able to come over here and, and find a, a, a base with somebody that can help them and, and have the facilities for them to be able to prepare the horses for a competition like Blenheim in the best way possible. They've started off in a nice rhythm. I th the horse just begin with well, showed a little bit of tension in his mouth, trying to open his mouth, but he's settled down a little bit more now. He's perfectly supple enough in that half pass. Good amount of crossing. Change the bend. And that's where sometimes the horses can just lose a little bit of balance. Just losing a little bit of forwardness there. He rather steadied up and dried up a little bit with her so l lost a little bit of forward momentum and here now the horse thought oh, do you want me to halt do you want me to walk and so she just needs to allow him to walk a little bit more forward it's looking a little bit cautious he looks a really blood type of horse i bet he can really gallop across the cr cross country so she's asking him to do the pirouette, keeping it more moving forward. And that was very nice. Just a little bit creepy through the walk. She's almost letting the judges know that the horse doesn't enjoy walking that much. Now I've got to allow him to, to go forward, if he will do, without having a break. Because he did perfectly nice pirouettes then. Walking, I'm guessing, isn't his favourite pace. He's doing it. And relaxed enough. We've certainly seen some more explosive 
But there is a lot of walk, isn't there? For a horse, if, if it isn't the sort of the strong point of the test, you look at the schedule and you think, oh, it's the A test. And the B <laughs> test actually has the halt and rain back, which asks a totally different question, but no walk pirouettes. Yes, um, if I've had a hot horse, uh, the walk pirouettes is like one of your nice, worst nightmares. Would, would you ever target competition specifically on what test they are in the schedule? Um, not quite. Not no. not quite. Unfortunately, um, you know, it, it, there aren't that many competitions of a particular level that you can choose. It would be very nice to, but uh, no, I think you just have to up your game with the training and. Uh, Try and try and get better at it. Um, this horse is, you can see he is obviously a little bit more tight than he showed, whereas in that medium canter, he didn't really let go. So she, it's not really allowing her to show a difference. So it's, it's looking restrained and a little cautious. So he rather was bent, didn't come around the corner that well. So she had to do quite a lot of sitting up and holding him together to, to get that change. And to be fair, he did a nice change. Almost like if she's going to let go, he's going to be off. And coming now into the half pass. Yeah, she's kept the bend. Just want to straighten up a little bit on that centre line. And then... The art here is to get the horses really super straight before doing the change, which he still had his quarters a little bit bent to the left as he came around the corner, which then makes the change very difficult to do. She's come down the centre line and lovely, lovely big smile and he stood still. So... I would have thought she would be happy enough with that. I don't think it's going to uh, threaten, the, threaten the leaders, um, but it's been a great first experience for her to come over here and to be riding at Blenheim is just a privilege in itself. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, they've actually been to this level twice before. Their best test is a 38.7. I wouldn't be surprised if they're in that region or even a little bit better than that here today. We'll update you with that score as soon as it does come through. That is Jamie Kellock and uh, her own Summer Bay. So that means we have just one more combination to go here. The... Uh, First day of uh, two days of dressage at the Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials brought to you by the Jockey Club. And as always, a big thank you to uh, some of the partners who have uh, made the event this year possible. And it's brilliant to see a couple of new names involved uh, as well. Quintessentially, who have pioneered the concept of lifestyle management, which I have to admit I'm absolutely fascinated by. And I'm sure that a number of riders here this weekend will be as well. I know they've got a... Um, working with some of the riders in the athletes lounge here but actually built around the singular proposition of bestowing back upon members the invaluable gift of time literally sounds like a game changer uh, that is quintessentially brilliant to see them involved in the sport parfum de Marly, who have got samples here this weekend and i have to admit i indulged in a little spritz at lunchtime so tina if i smell wonderful that is what it is and i'm sat here smelling it thinking i might go and treat myself a little bit later on uh, and of course uh, brookfield equestrian who actually don't have any horses running this weekend uh, but uh, john and chloe perry are uh, supporting this weekend as uh, sponsors so brookfield equestrian which offers first class livery and training in the heart of berkshire many of you will be familiar with the brookfield horses many of which are campaigned by tom McEwen and piggy march so uh, do support the sponsors if you can our partners here we're very grateful to each and every one of them so here is uh, harry much and uh, harry comes forward with uh, shanberg cooley Harry, who is part of the Wesker Equestrian Foundation and has been working really closely with the likes of uh, Pippa Funnel, who has been instrumental on his improvement in this first phase. This horse owned by Carol Much and uh, Harry is a really talented jockey, actually has five star experience as well. 
This is only an eight-year-old, actually, so he's by far one of the youngest horses in the class. He's actually moved from the eight- and nine-year-old class to the long format. Um, and he just showed a little bit of inexperience then as he went into that first hole. He just lost his balance a little bit. So this is a, you know, a big deal for this horse. He's done quite a lot in his young life. In fact, you have the statistics there. Yeah, I mean, he's been pretty um, established at the four-star short level this year, actually. He went very well at Hambro Sport Horses, Burgeon International Horse Trials. I know he's a horse that Harry thinks a huge amount of is really fast. I know Harry says he's properly quick, properly bold cross-country. Um, and that boldness has occasionally run him into a spot of bother. But Harry, a really talented young jockey, and I know has been enormously grateful to uh, Pippa for all of her help and guidance. And she's been a big influence on his improvement in the first phase as well. Yes, and, you know, to have the guidance of somebody like Pippa is invaluable. And he's also been training with Chris Bartle because he's based up north. So he's really like a sponge bringing in all this knowledge from such great people but this horse so far is is looking like the young horse in the class um he's he's looking around him a little bit and just losing the contact and and the connection and and the rideability so there through the half passes there wasn't really much half pass or or crossing um so he's just gone a little bit what we call green, a little bit inexperienced in his mouth and and rideability. He would have done all the training, um, but at the moment he's he's looking a little bit overwhelmed of being here. And so now it's just a case of just getting through. He just got a little bit stuck on that in that pirouette. But you can see that he is an athlete, but there he just went a little bit rigid and looking and coming up a bit above the bridle um and looking around him so he's not today showing himself off to his full ability but they obviously felt that while the ground has now come good that they want to move him into a long format but hopefully there'll be many years of this horse at the at the top level. I just wonder, I don't know, um, but I wonder if he maybe thought he might take the horse to Buccalow but didn't get on to the British nominations. I'm not sure. Purely pure speculation. Pure speculation. I don't know. <laughs> We're pulling faces at each other. We don't know the answer to that. But, um, you know, he's he's got good people advising him. So uh, they've uh, there's obviously a theory behind that and maybe they felt he would be more competitive over the long format as he finds the galloping aspect um, easy um, but he's getting quite feisty at the moment and as you can see from Harry's facial expressions is like oh no this is becoming a little bit of a nightmare so I have just got to ride him through this um, it's a case now of completing this test rather than thinking you're going to be here and being competitive. So, And, and it's interesting, isn't it? You know, an eight-year-old actually, yes, he has done a good bit in his, his career to date, but actually never anything really like an atmosphere like this or an arena like this and an occasion such as this. And I think some of the young horses just get a little bit affected by it. Yes, and it is a case of producing these horses. And, and this horse may be showing today that he is still a baby and to remember that and, and might need to just take a little step back and establish himself a little bit more. Look, he did a very nice flying change there. Now, I'm quite sure at home this horse is, is probably absolutely breathtakingly magical. But with a bit of atmosphere brought into it, he's he's shown his inexperience and that maybe he just needs to go back and, and practice doing some dressage and some atmosphere so that he really can show himself off to, for, to his true ability because he's a beautiful quality horse. And I'm quite sure he'll give Harry a total thrill cross country. And it was interesting and fair play, fair play to Harry because he came... Uh, into that first flying change and the horse was getting very, very hot. Actually, the change didn't really happen properly for him. But that second flying change happened beautifully. Um, 
when the horse leaves actually looking quite pleased with himself Harry a little bit more of a grimace but uh, there is still a lot to like for the future a couple of scores to bring you actually Jamie Kellock Summer Bay 42.4 and actually just outside the uh, top 10, Kimi Sasir and Landmarks Monaco 33.8 into 14th. But this is, uh, you can just see uh, Kimi there going into the uh, top 15. And that is where she will sit overnight because, of course, we have uh, concluded the first day of dressage here. And uh, Marlin Hansen hot top, Carlitos Quidditch K, an international personal best at any level for that combination, leads the way. 24.6 ahead of Sarah Bullimore and Coraway, 27.8. Dirk Schrader Casino, 80, uh, completing the podium as things stand at the moment. Felicity Collins and uh, Lizzie Boff flying the flag for the young riders inside the top five. Gemma Stevens has another ride tomorrow with Jalapeno, on whom she was top ten here 12 months ago. But Flash Cooley sits in sixth overnight. Rose Nesbitt, e.g. Michelangelo, would have been delighted with their 29.9. Uh, Georgie Goss was one of the first down the centre line this morning, actually, and she holds on to eighth overnight, 31.0 with Verloop. Izib Power sends a fine and Emily Philp Cupido are rounding out the top 10. 32.4 Emily Philp just sneaking into the top 10 there. But that actually concludes the first day of dressage here at Blenheim Palace International Halls. Charles Tina Cook has been sat alongside me. Uh, Tina, looking forward to another brilliant day tomorrow. Yeah, and actually looking at both the, the scoreboards of the long and the short, we've got some really competitive horses that you know will be going out there on cross country day and be fast and that have got good national one day form um so it's an exciting competition already and then we've got tomorrow you know we've got some great combinations we've still got pippa funnel to come out tomorrow uh just to name but one of many to come forward that could go right to the top of the leaderboards yeah, absolutely. That is MGH Grafton Street, the 2019 Land Rover Burley Horse Trials winner. Uh, but from us here in the four-star long format, from myself, uh, from Tita Cook and all of our guests today, a big thank you to you guys for watching. And we'll be back tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. The first horse goes down the centre line. So do join us then.